soft time. <laughs> Rob, do you want to start recording? Just hit record. Yep. Okay. There Jim, are you on? Is paying? This is the Infield Planning Board. It's Wednesday, October 12th, 2022. We are in the DPW conference room and also on the Microsoft Team virtual platform. Uh, calling the meeting to order at seven o'clock. Planning board members present from my left. Linda Jones. Kid. Kate Stewart. Dan, Dan Kiley. David Frack. Brad Rich. Tim Jennings. Bert. Rick Rodhouts, alternates. Uh, alternates. And Bonnie Alternates. And Whitney Banker, alternate and, and reporting secretary <laughs> and our staff, Rob Taylor and Whitney. And on the team's platform, Bill Vermeer, Bill Vermeer. Uh, we do have a quorum. We have a full board. We don't need any alternates tonight. We don't have anything to vote on either. So <laughs> works out great. Um, Public comments. We have Celio Fierro here. <laughs> Do you want to make a comment at this point? No. Speak <laughs> now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> yeah, hurt. And we also have Ed Morris, our town manager. Hi, Ed. Uh, first order of business is review of the September 28 minutes. Anybody have any corrections or comments? On Line that? 69. I think um, the last word should be she instead of he. I think that's one of the ones I had. Yeah. But you have to ask her about her pronouns. That's, well, I was going to, but. What pronouns do you have? Gosh, I think the entire listserv knows it's she, her, um, but I've taken a couple of <laughs> beatings, so I'll take the ask. Oh, well, about upset. line 308. <laughs> yep, I had the same one. Entire bus off the street, not yeah. entire building off the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want buildings in the street. Either. Either. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I had one on page one on line 40. Um, it was, it says line 278, clarify Ms. Stewart is not part of everybody. Is a quote unquote everybody watching? Is everyone online watching? What that was line? Um, line 40. Um, yes. Yep. Actually, online. online. Yeah, no, and that was because that was what the discussion was about. Yep. Yeah. Because you would ask the very good question. Line, line 280. Oops, 228. That's not mine. Good for the Hitler. Go for it. Uh, Mr. Dubay said, thy field, this will be a higher quality <laughs> platform. Right. <laughs> Perhaps we should bring it down to they. <laughs> right. If you answer. It's more of a medieval kind of, <laughs> well, to thine own self be true, right? <laughs> 285 is embedded, correct? Right. Yep. It's not. <clears throat> E N embedded. E M. I don't uh, know. I don't know. It just didn't look right. I think it is supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, line 80. <clears throat> it's just a tense. I'm pretty sure um, line 80 says Ms. Stewart said the that the actual discussion it says is very basic, and I think it should be was this night. Because I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. it was. It's a it's got the subjunctive because would not is an accent. Yeah. There you go. 381. You alleged that I said drove aerial photography. It is drone aerial photography. Didn't drive it. And um three line three fifty two. Um, I was wondering if it's a, it starts with underway and then there's the word but. I wondered if it shouldn't just be a semicolon. Um, the but doesn't really, I don't know, maybe I said it that way, maybe you didn't. Yeah. But, you know, but starting now would be better. I mean, it could be, but 
think then you, you don't have to worry about what it says if you just put a semicolon. Uh, 424. Leeches with two E's are those little blood sucking yeah. animals. <laughs> <laughs> and leech, L E A C H, is what you put in the ground to get rid of your you know what. Perfect. <laughs> All right. <laughs> English is such a fun language. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not learning it. Unless well, you're foreign. using leeches in your field. <laughs> well, I, I, I was going to add that, but. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know how many people appreciate my sense of humor. Right. Obviously, you do. <laughs> OK, uh, any more? Yeah, 341. Go ahead, 340 Jim. and 341. Members agreed they do. I'm not sure that exactly characterizes what was said. I, it, what line are you on, Tim? 340 and 341. 341. Yeah, in answer to the question whether or not we like the project. You could say many members agreed. Right. They do. I certainly didn't have an opinion. Yeah. Change it to read no one protested. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think anybody really strongly, like, I think there was a lot of head nodding. Well, you can just. Yeah. I mean, I watched the video. Was conceptual. And, I mean, you can say that nobody strongly just nobody first uh, voiced disapproval. disapproval. There we go. Right. That's I think yeah, that, I yeah, mean, it's kind of a hard one when it's a it's not a, a verbal. Well, know. yeah, and it's a conceptual. It's conceptual. You don't make yeah. a decision. No, he asked us to be like, right. We have warm and fuzzy. About it. Right. Oh. Yeah. Anything else, Tim? No. Anyone else? Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make the motion to approve as amended. Second. Second. Go ahead. Yeah. Motion made and seconded. All in favor of approving as amended? Aye. Aye. All right. Opposed? Abstention. Abstention. You're not a voting member tonight, Kurt. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. <laughs> oh, there. You can't. You can't abstain. You can't even abstain. <laughs> Uh, OK, Kate, what's the select board up to? All right, so we met on October 3rd and it. Um, the agenda looked short, but it took quite a bit of time. So uh, <laughs> took a look at a proposed short term rental ordinance. And if you haven't heard now, that is um, being has been remanded down to planning board. So you guys will be getting the short term rental ordinance to take a peek at. Um, I don't know when it will be scheduled. I guess that's up to. Rob and David to set into the agenda. Uh, hang on, what, what do you mean remanded? Well, we're not going to, we're not, a, the select board is not a land use board. Okay. So we are not going to take up it in the first instance. So it, would have to be a, it, okay. it has to be a zoning change. Yeah. 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 We can talk about it tonight, actually. Yeah. All right. uh, and, uh, okay. Ed, I can just explain that a little more. We took it to the select board yeah. to get the feeling if this yeah. is something we wanted right. to talk about after our discussion. It was agreed upon that it was something worth talking about and that the planning board is the right place to come It's going to generate a lot of interest all the way around. Uh, I hope, hope everybody before you just see the word short term rental ordinance will approach it with an open mind because I think a lot of people came up in their mind with something that they didn't like before even reading it. And then once they read it, realized, oh, this isn't exactly the approach. So I would ask you read it with an open mind and we're going to get some really good feedback. And I think this is a great process to go through before we have a problem, right? Because we're going to be proactive about making a good decision together as neighbors. So that will be coming. Uh, there well, was. Hang on. So what would be the process? I'm, I'm not following that. You're going to get a copy from Rob in your packet. Yeah, a copy of. The, the proposed draft. 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 So just to back up even further. So this goes way back to when Ryan Ellsworth was our town manager. Mm -hmm. And um, he asked me to draft a sort of sample uh, short term rental ordinance. At that time, it was thought that it would be something that the select board would adopt, kind of like they did the mask ordinance for our face master and COVID. Or I think you guys have probably done it. Done a leash, dog leash. Did that go through the select board? We don't have it. We have a dog ordinance, and it's a very old. Okay, but at the discussion, as we sort of brought forward this draft that we put together, and we tweaked Ed and I edited it and kind of threw some ideas out. It's not a prohibition. 
it's more of sort of just trying to get people to do the bare minimum of what right. really is needed for short-term rentals things like maximum occupancy of the of the unit being posted inside fire extinguishers on text for people when they're out of town that kind of stuff off-street okay. parking and only I think rightly so when, it, when the select board looked Keith at said, it. why is it coming to us? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we looked at it as really this kind of seems like a land use issue and mm -hmm. kind of seems like it should probably be a section in the zoning ordinance as a land issue, land use issue. Mm -hmm. And the, the more I thought about it, I think that's probably the right direction to go. And I will absolutely, uh, uh, I could get you a copy. We could put it up on the screen tonight or I could print copies, but I, I didn't want to overload you tonight with too right. much. So maybe the next meeting we could, Put it on the agenda as a consideration item. Let's let's see how far let's see how far we get yeah. tonight. If we yeah. if we're out of ordinances at seven or eight thirty, yeah. Um, and the board wants to keep going, yeah. we'll ask you to put it on. No problem. And I think one of the points I just wanted to touch on tonight with you guys, and I won't belabor it, is that because of master planning, we're covering some of these kind of topics about the rural character recreation and how we use our space, our land, and our homes. And so I think this is very timely um, and we'll probably have some good synergy with what's coming out of the master planning task force as a final project. So okay, good. definitely, I think it's a, a very timely discussion and I'm excited to have it go to you guys because I know you're very serious. And we're, we're, we're well excited about it too, Kate. <laughs> I'm more excited that it's not all on me. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to bring yeah. it up. That's not true. What? Um, we're bringing it here. I think this is the right place right. to have the discussion. Yeah. I think as we go through the discussion, the decision will be made whether it's a zoning type right. issue or if it needs to go back to right. the select board. Yeah. And some of that's going to be based on what teeth we put into it. Is not following it a zoning issue, a zoning violation, or are we going to have fines associated with it? And so right. I talked a little bit with the attorney and it could go either way. And I think it's worth the discussion to see what is it. Either way it goes, we're going to have discussions here and it'll have to be passed at town meeting before it gets put in place. And from your point of view, can it go both ways? Some of it is land use and some of it is ordinance? I don't, I don't really think so. And I'm I'm struggling which way it should go. And you'll see it as we get deeper yeah. into it. But, you know, if we're going to issue a ticket or a violation right. or something, who's that going to and what's it happening? And it, it gets very convoluted as we talk right. about this, you know, because if we have too many people in the house, is that a property owner issue? Is it a the people that are in the house issue? And, it's a health and there's safety. a lot of health and safety. And and does it go to the yeah, who get building inspector? Who get the fine. But I right. think this I is think the right the owner. place to talk about it. Oh, it's the, the discussion or only. Before we make yeah. the city. Before we get to in the weeds, probably better move yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to say, and this may apply tonight, may not. Um, somebody mentioned to me that watching our videos, if we have multiple conversations mm -hmm. going on, or we have people that are talking over other people, it makes it very difficult for them to hear. So I am going to try to be cognizant of that. I ask everybody to be cognizant of that. And I will try to gavel down anybody who speaks out of turn. Kurt? I just have some notes on that topic. I can bring it up under new business if you want. Or um, Look, Let's do it under new. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that would be good. Can I finish my report? Yes, I got just a couple <laughs> more lines. Um, so there was um, considerable discussion about creating a committee for the Johnson Beach property. That committee will go forward. Um, Ed is in the process of working on a questionnaire and we'll do what we did for the okay, and municipal facilities. <laughs> Part two, um, so that we can invite people and you know be inclusive. There was a discussion about strategic planning that we had previously undertaken and what we wanted to to do going forward, um, and a little bit of talk about you know how that aligns with the master planning task force being um, finished and having the new master plan. So that was a topic, and we um, discussed a little bit about the financing option for connection fees for for water and sewer because if you have a major project, it can be. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, we, I think we made a motion to, yeah, 
let Ed handle that piece um, and we surplus a little bit of property. So that's it. Okay, I have heard through the rumor grapevine that part of the Johnson Drive committee will be one member from the planning board and one from the master plan task. Force. I watched that portion of the meeting last night and I kind of cringed and said, <laughs> I don't think that's exactly how it was going to lay out. Um, I think we from talked about how it was one person from the master planning task. Force. That's what I had was one person. Yeah. OK, right. so I would encourage as many from there that wanted to apply. Yeah, to apply. And by application. Mm -hmm. and select one of these one as they go through their yeah, I, I was going to suggest that um, it would not be appropriate for members of this board because at some point we might have to do, do a site plan review and that would mean that person just might have to recuse themselves. Yeah, planning board was not decided. It was mm. master plan. If it, sell, if it sold, it would be a site plan review. Is that how? No, if it's going to. Oh, the town can make they themselves use. do. Okay, you're all right. right. Or you, I, I'm not saying you should follow your own rules. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. Um, let's see. That select board report. Well, no. I, uh, go ahead, Tim. Was mention was made of, of um, water and sewer connection fees. Um. So for the larger. So what was the dollar amount? It was like eleven thousand. For, for connection fees over ten thousand dollars, that we would finance that over a couple of years for somebody. We just work out a payment plan with them instead of an upfront fee. Okay. So no hearings, no conceptuals, zoning amendments for our next town meeting. Uh, we had thrown several ideas out on the table and this afternoon another one got thrown at us. Um, the Department of Live Free, otherwise known as the State Office of Planning, um, has reviewed our floodplain ordinances and found that in order to maintain our membership in the federal floodplain management, uh, whatever it is, program. program, and to therefore allow those people who are in a floodplain to buy flood insurance, we have to make some changes um, to be consistent with what the feds want. So it's probably six pages of our zoning ordinance and floodplain ordinance that need to be updated. And uh, this share for Phil's benefit. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time discussing this because we really don't have any options if we want to stay yeah, in, the, say, in they the have program. a model ordinance and we just cut and paste. What's that? I'm assuming they have a model ordinance, a language that they want. And Absolutely. They just say, okay, out with this, they, in with yeah, this. They, yes. they took yeah. our they took our ordinance and they marked it up. Delete, 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 yeah. add this, delete that. Mm -hmm. Um here it is. Yeah. Why don't you just scroll through it? Quickly, I mean, I don't the, expect the, anybody to read the it. The red strike through is delete, and the yellow highlight is insert. So, see, they've mm -hmm. basically added a little bit of this and taken out a little bit of that. Okay. It sounds like we might have had a, a model ordinance in the first place. Yes. Well, we have one in effect now. Right. Well, I know, but the, the yeah, we origin of it was probably a, most likely. Yeah, probably yeah, we didn't like this. Right. This came from a Fred's or uh, who run the program. Right. And this is their changes, really. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to like their, their somebody there. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, between the right. exactly. exactly. amendments, it's, 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 it's about they're looking at it. Is it things. any help to the what, Sealy? Is it any help to the people that live in the floodplain? Any Without changes that we I I don't know. I I haven't done much more than skim it. I think it's it's not a detriment to them. 
because the right it's not if you don't do it yeah. they can't purchase flood insurance right would it be simpler for us instead of doing line by line in the zoning ordinance just say delete the old ordinance and here's the new one and yeah and just leave yeah, this is what they gave us they gave us a sample word article um are you in favor of adoption of amendment number blank we give it a number right proposed by the planning board Good and yeah. but um david and i were discussing i think because we do it at the voting portion meaning the ballot portion mm -hmm. on tuesday you, you still have to have it out put it well you just have both copies complete correct right and just say this is the old ones being deleted this is the new one that's being adopted yeah I don't think well the only problem is you, it's going to be a seven it has to be the ballot red strike through and the, and the insert like what would the, the i think we i feel like we had this conversation because uh, i'm a big fan of economizing paper and i didn't win yeah but we can all ask well, I mean, it's it would be harder for the voters not knowing what the change is. I mean, we can right? obviously in our narrative and do a good job yeah. up front. Well, I mean, as much as you can make people read anything. Well, yeah. the, maybe if you sent that to us individually so yeah. we could read over the next yeah. couple of weeks or so. It literally came, what was it, four o'clock today? Literally <laughs> four o'clock. Like, uh, they knew. <laughs> they they, they knew we were going to have a meeting. I talked to Jim and he said he thought it was about every four or five years they do this to us. So, uh, hey, thanks for tracking kind of our work. Housekeeping, yeah. basically. Yeah. 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 Do they issue regular, like, hey, you'll want to look at this type updates that we. Not really. Now, so, so they just tell you afterwards. It's like, probably the same language. Every town that has flood insurance right, program yeah. has yeah. the same language. Well, when they yeah, update, the you think out. they would send around a note being like, BTW, we updated. You might want to do this instead of coming around later and being Not like, really. so you missed no, it. No, because what happened was the Fed sent it to them and now yeah. <laughs> they're, because this was probably the Fed's to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was. was. Yeah, it was for the state. No doubt, no doubt. So yeah. the, yeah. the Fed has changed, so now you have to change state. Yeah. Send it down to your towns. Yep. So ju just to show you how efficient this operation here in Enfield is, the email from livefreenh.gov <laughs> was sent at 3.38 this afternoon, yeah. and at 4.01, <laughs> you got it. Rob sent it to me. So we're doing really good. <laughs> um, any more discussion on the floodplain ordinance proposal? I'll send it around to everybody so you got you got it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk to Elisa about sort of the logistics of how my recollection is it has to be basically you have to basically yeah. because it's being voted on in, in paper ballot. It needs to be put in front of them yeah. so they at least know what they're voting on. I mean, they, right. they have to be able to see it. And I think we can do the strike through right. means to delete the text and then the highlight means to insert the text. Right. Um, it does use a lot of paper. Okay, I'm sorry about no, that. No, it, it is what yeah. it is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can uh, skip those sections that don't have any changes. Right? You have to print the entire. You have to print the whole thing. Yeah. We think. Mm -hmm. We think. Yeah. I, I yeah. Think so. And I think it makes more sense for the context because otherwise it looks like something. I mean, if the goal yeah, is to be transparent and not have anything missing, then yeah. I would see why. I mean, and I. Then I think an important thing is you know at the very end, mm -hmm. right before it's. You know, time to vote. Them. Check yes or no. Planning board supports the adoption of this update. And then the narrative that has to say it has to it has to yeah. be done. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a federal it's mandate. A federal mandate. Yeah. Yeah. If we want to keep flood insurance, yep. we got to make these changes word right. for word. Yeah. Okay. I think we beat floods to death. Um, on our list that we talked about at our last meeting, the first one that I have is the parking lot or parking space standardization at 10 feet by 20 feet for all zoning districts and also uh, talking about and perhaps putting into the zoning ordinance. Um, specific requirements for retail establishments that are not really retail establishments 
thinking specifically of restaurants, which have the same one space per, I think it's 500 square feet of retail space. Mm -hmm. And I think a case could be made for places of assembly, such as theaters, um, possibly houses of worship. So he's actually sent us a document, yeah. so I've got it here. Up. Oh, well, so I, I'm not I'm not knowing how you've handled this in the past, the logistics of wordsmith and a, you know, zoning change. I thought I'd just start with what I knew you were keyed on and then. Um, but if you want to, I mean, you, you talk about how do you do it? How have you done it in the past? You talked about the, the article that needs changing in general. And then you left it to Rob to. We, now we kind of work really out. Now we kind of work out the verbiage yeah. here at the table. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I try yeah. to communicate yeah. in the in the yeah. eventual presentation what you guys have said. Yeah, and there's been numerous of times when I just said I'll take on this project, come up with what I think it should be, present it, and then it gets chewed apart and spit out. And yeah, apparently, <laughs> I volunteered to do that. Some cheaper travel. Yeah, here yeah. last time. Yeah. And then we eventually come up with something that we all agree with. <laughs> and it does become a document. I mean, yeah. we've got a starting yeah. of a document here right. so we can work with it. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, look, if you may, if, if you allow, I'll, I'll just walk through what I suggested initially here. And then I looked through every document that we're in charge of uh, subdivision regs, zoning ordinance. Uh, excavation right you know looking for parking and i actually couldn't find anything other than this section here 409 yeah so that's the only one that's okay it. uh well that was good because i had the impression that somewhere else there was a, a reference to the size of a parking lot yeah so i had that impression as well yeah uh, so that's good anyway um and what should be the minimum parking size I suggest that maybe you could even have two. So we can talk about that or we can move on to some of the other. Now look, let's talk about dimensions. Okay, I let's think talk that's about the first thing since that's number one. Um, I'm pretty sure we've had this discussion in past years and decided that 10 by 20 a lot of people drive full-size pickups and those are big they're big mm -hmm. um and from my point of view i think what we needed to tweak was the fact that um there was at least one zoning district that did not either didn't have the 10 by 20 or had a different size which i think it, so, yeah, it was a, uh, it was some place that had a different size, and um, I think we should just kind of be consistent throughout the town so that you know everybody knows the parking space is ten could, by twenty. I could not find that reference, but it, it it's, it's there. When I was it's there, when I was what because I was bored <laughs> sitting in my camper <laughs> watching the video. I went through the regs, and I didn't have my didn't think to bring my notes that I was writing at the time, but um, there's at least one section I can't remember which one it is that has the smaller size, like two or three, like R1, R2, R3, will have like the 10 by 20. It's either an R5 or CB as the yeah. nine by, and then I think there's one that doesn't even have any dimensions. Yeah, it's just blank. It's just no. There's no mm -hmm. line in parking, yeah. and, and it might be a CI, but I keep like I. I would have to go through line by line again to find it, but yeah, yeah it was it was weird. To to follow up, um, one year we did add a definition in the definition section, mm -hmm. and that was the ten by twenty. Yeah, and I think from that we just need to go through and decide, or you know, just go through the go through the ordinance and wherever it talks about parking spaces. Yeah, so. R1, it's 10 by 20, paragraph N. Right. R3 is 10 by 20, paragraph N. 
on R5. You said it, you didn't think it was in the R5, Kurt? Possibly. Um, no, it's there. It's in the R5 it, as well. It must be the CB and CI group four. Um, group four. Yeah. Might have been something different. I don't see it in the uh, CB. It's probably where it's blank. So maybe we have to add it to the CB. Yeah. I mean, I, I suggest we just do a 10 by 20, all districts. I and agree. Just, and just leave yeah. it like that. And just leave it like that. It just eliminates confusion. Yeah. And and if, if an applicant is desperate for extra space, they can go to the zoning and right. apply for variance. Yeah, yeah right. well, yeah. Uh, OK, they could. And we, we directed Keller, I think, to do that. Right. right. Um, what about if we had something like this, which said nine by eighteen, which is the minimum for constrained sites, and um, then everyone would have a constrained site. Yes, yeah, yeah. How do you define have, a constrained yeah. site? Yeah, I want to squeeze two more spaces on my lots, so it's constrained. You know, I, you know, I don't want to build a retaining wall to squeeze in one more space or to make my my parking space is 10 feet rather than nine feet. Yeah. I look okay. at fair enough. Yeah. 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 I'm just curious because having driven a small vehicle and a large one, like what size is a normal size? Like you don't go to some places and they have tiny spots and you're like, you can't right. how do you fit anything in there? Yeah. And then so people take two spots and you're in trouble oh, yeah. and you start. Yeah. It changes with the price of gas. It's, it's the big, yeah, the pickup trucks are wide. And I don't care about the gas price. I can't put my cow in the mini cooper. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think there are like, you don't want people taking two spaces. And that's right. my, my personal only way I can get my not that large SUV in is to take two spaces. Mm -hmm. My not experience good. is every law is different. But yeah, yeah. Um, you can you can see that in West Lebanon. Yeah. yeah. Hannaford's, Hannaford's actually the aisle piece is, the, is an interesting piece because Hannaford's is about eight feet narrower than Shaw's. The aisle, if you look at it. I just crammed foodians in some yeah. interesting spots recently. Yeah, <laughs> it's, the, it's the aisle that we really need to keep an eye on too because yeah. a 20 foot yeah. long pickup truck yeah. can't back out mm -hmm. of a 12 foot minimum aisle. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, it's, especially if work. it's a nine foot wide, yeah, nine foot, or wide, eight foot yeah. wide space. There's right. just no place right. to, to yeah. turn the front mm -hmm. end as you back up. So yeah. this is um, 12 foot for one way aisles. Right. Um, that, that would be a problem for a pickup. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Because I, I drive one too, and I right. So I would suspect we'd need a sixteen at least for a minimum for a one-way aisle. Yeah, I don't know what the number is. There must be some parking. Standard. I just did a Google search for a normal parking space. North America's standard parking space dimensions range between eight point five to nine feet wide by eighteen feet long. Yeah, yeah nine that's nine North. That's North America. Mm -hmm. I know. And be careful going much bigger than that. It'll make development harder. Yeah, I mean, not <laughs> that, um, that Laramie, the people right. proposing mm -hmm. Laramie, had said they could do 10 by 20. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I think maybe that's what I'm getting at here is everyone would be happy with a 9 by 18. But if you can do by 10 by 20, if he decides to do that, then why not let? Well, he, he, there's no reason why it couldn't make it. Because nobody big. would. If, if you allow nine yeah. by 18, nobody would give you 10 by 20. Well, yeah, yeah. It was just getting more spaces in there. Right, because he can then have, rather than having 32 underground, he'll be able to have 36 underground. So we should settle on nine by 18. Oh, 10 by 20. <laughs> oh, 18, I think, is. How long? Well, I mean, you're how get, long is how's your lot, is, is, long is an eight foot eight foot bed pickup truck with a crew cab or an extended cab? Mm -hmm. Really long. Well, those are oh, those are mega. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, longer, mine's a longer than twenty, right? right? Oh yeah, yeah. Mine's oh, yeah. a standard size pickup truck, and there's a lot of places where I just don't park. 
Right. Well, not in that on the exactly. lot. I, I just have to scan the lot to find a place right. I can park and easily get out of. Right. Yeah. You know, and at work at the hospital, even there where they have pretty wide, I right. had to I was backing in so I could get out. Right. Because I had a lot of difficulty, especially at night when it was hard to see your corners backing out because right. there's a car sure. behind me on the other side. Right. And it was dark and it was like, I'm gonna hit somebody. Mm -hmm. That's a long that eight feet long. I wouldn't ride zoning for the exception. No, I think that <laughs> I, honestly though, I let the nine feet to me, if th there are companies, I mean Lebanon's an example of it. They don't exactly give stuff away for free. So if you have some that are wider, it means it was a choice. It, and I mean the the standard is a US standard and most cars are in cities, which are smaller vehicles. We're rural, so most people, not most, but a significant amount of people drive pickup trucks <laughs> because where we live. Yes, yeah, I think so, yeah, I just to plan yeah. to park somewhere else, honestly, like it just to, because it was my choice and I always drove a Mini Cooper before. So I plan to park somewhere I else. Won't, I won't throw it out there, but I went to the town offices today and that entire line by the police station was all pickup trucks. Yeah. There was not a single car. Yeah. In that yeah. line, I mean, it's it's where we live because they yeah. all drive pickup trucks. So we're we're speculating TV. about what fits a pickup truck, and I think we need to go out and measure and and actually put a truck. And so over the course of the next we, couple of weeks, why don't we do? We that? did that. Did, we measured. Did, they were nine foot wide. Fill, These are nine you, foot wide. We did outside. that. Like, well, we did the. Um, yeah, I think we said the it was, thing on Main Street. It, it, it was right. It was yeah. nine feet, and we go. That would be better. Yeah, that's where we came out yeah. right. I, that's I what think we that out it would here. be better, Well, if you constrain people in a smaller lot area. We already have a parking spot. Well, okay, we have a perceived parking issue downtown because people hate walking. Um, and everyone wants the front row seats. So if you do that, then we may have a space where you're making it so we can't get enough parking spaces when we're doing a project. Right? I don't think you want to do the higher end of max. Um, I think you need to do the lower. What's the higher end? No, but like you don't want to go 20. 20 by 20. But I don't think you want to go that big. I think you do want to go that big. I drove a Suburban for 10 years. It was 20 feet long. Yeah. Oh, no, I've, I've driven. It's the look, same size yeah. as a pickup truck. I have a I have a dump truck with a dump body on that's, it. I get it. But I plan great, on but I plan on parking somewhere else. I think they can get relief by going to the zoning board if there truly is a hardship. I, I don't think, though, that we shouldn't be picking who drives what. You make a standard size car space and the people with bigger ones, and you if say your clientele as a business you know is gonna drive, you can make that choice as a good business decision too, right? Like we shouldn't be telling people how to make good business decisions. Well, I mean, that gets... Yes, we should tell them how to. Well, I mean, that would Do get we can... want comfortable parking in Enfield or not? Do we want parking in Enfield or not? That's the question because right no, now- No, comfortable not. parking. You already said the problem okay. was people- Kate, you're, 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 you're oh. focused on the downtown area and- No, I'm focused on like parking in a parking lot here. Like, it, like, it, in a parking lot downtown where, yeah. where admittedly there is a lack of parking yeah. and you need more spaces. Yeah. But there are other sections of town which are commercial, which may be residential, where you've got to look at what are people driving. So do you want to do it by TV overlay? No, 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 because you want to make it harder to park everywhere? Or 20% well, of slots of parking spaces have to be 10 by 20. The rest can be nine by 18. That's not going to work because yeah. people aren't going to realize that, yeah. you know, a medium-sized car goes in this space, and that space yeah, is yeah. is reserved for a, a pickup car. Compact car, yeah. compact I mean, car I mean, spaces. So well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can do that's that. That's exactly what what but, it is. But, that's what they do. Yeah, but you know, I what I think Kate or right. whoever said it is talking about the the other side of that coin. I know where you have a space for big for big cars, and then you know, eighty <coughs> percent are for well. The rest of us. Right. I mean, our ordinance, 80% of our ordinance already says 10 by 20. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we just make the other 20% 10 by 20 and leave it at that? Now, the, sec the second part there is more complicated. So how do you calculate how many spaces per per use? Wicked complicated. 
but if I was physical size, I would, I mean, it's already there, 10 by 20 is what we always assumed everything was. It wasn't until somebody discovered that, oh, it doesn't say that here. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, quote, semi-rural towns, it's, the ones that I'm familiar with, um, 10 by 20. Right. 200 square feet. But I'll, I'll, I'll put some age into this. The only reason why it's 10 by 20 is because we changed it to 10 by 20. It was not originally 10 by 20. What so was it originally? It was originally the 9 by 18s. And everybody said we want bigger spaces, so some of them didn't get it. We did not get to some of them, mm -hmm. but we did get to the R ones and the R two and that, and we changed those to ten by twenty. That was probably no more than five years ago. Well, remember, maybe we changing the number of spaces per use. Remember that discussion. That was a part of the, the yeah the yeah. four yeah the root four. But I, I believe we we changed it to 10 by 20 a few years ago because okay. originally it was 9 by 18. Yeah. And everybody was saying, everybody's driving pickup trucks. I yeah. can't, you can't put two pickup trucks next to each other because mm -hmm. neither one of them can get out yeah. in a 9 by 18. Yeah, and if you get somebody who doesn't put their vehicle smack dab in the center, mm -hmm. it it just makes it more difficult for the guy next to you right do we just I, i'm trying to consider because i obviously i drive a bigger vehicle so i'm not opposed to having the bigger size but i want to also think about how many things we're going to have to send over to first like if you do 10 by 18 right or continue with 10 by 18 and then anybody who needs something smaller has to go to the zoning board for relief is that what would have to happen every time are we i i would think so okay. i mean is that something yeah. we want to well, continue to do well right. i guess i guess my answer to that is what are we talking one or two times a year i have no idea well yeah. we've yeah. only had one and two yeah. the last three years we've had one and it's yeah. Kelleher. yeah we I haven't had i mean i don't think we've had any since i've been on the board property that should not give a variance so you're, right. you're really restricting density by doing this if you're trying to increase density I, I think well, so too. I, I think yeah. if we had a, 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 tr a mechanism in, in, in this zoning ordinance that allowed um, a property owner to go to the smaller lot size um, upon approval of the zoning administrator or something, you know, so they don't have to go to the ZBA over this. Okay. I think mm -hmm. that puts or a it on the zoning administrator yeah. Yeah, to make yeah. those decisions. That's not right. right. It's it's in the zoning unless you put it in the site plan review. Right. Um, it's or could you make it a special exception rather than a variance? Yeah. I may have an answer. If you did something like what what he's asking for there, that ten by twenty is what we're asking for. Yeah. But if you need nine by eighteen to meet the criteria you have below, that could be approved oh. by Rob. But if you have enough space to make ten by twenty, right? To meet that, he has to do. He would decide what his constrained lot is. Calaver's was a constrained lot. We agree. That's why he got sent to. But yeah, if we could make, if we could have the constraint, but they don't get to come in and say, "I've got a constrained lot." Yeah. He has to say, yeah, you've got a constrained lot. You can go nine by AT. <laughs> but it can't be, like you said, it can't be because I don't want to put a wall there. Right. Or right. well, I want extra space on my building. Right. And I need to accommodate right. the customers with a small parking space. Right. Well, and, and, and the building owner is also making a, a, a business decision. Kelleher is. Mm -hmm going to have smaller parking spaces. Yeah. And so uh, from perspective tenant is going to look at that. He's driving an eight foot bed in a crew cab truck and saying, right. I'm not going to rent here. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's also the or, argument. I... Sorry. Or the market will or solve the market. the problem for you. Yeah. Right. Tim Quirk was at one of our meetings. And she's like, oh, you're going to need extra parking spaces? I'm happy to rent my space. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that that, that was the other side running. of it was three or four spaces. He right could have, yeah. he could rent one space and all of a sudden he doesn't have a constrained lot anymore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or his tenants can rent the space. Well, he would that that wouldn't that wouldn't play into the constrained lot 
idea. Well, no, that's what I'm saying is he's saying he's got a constrained lot now when in fact he could rent a space and all he could then have 10 by 20s. No, he couldn't. Yeah, because one of them, one of those spaces was you know, a sorry. handicap space. Yeah, yeah, but we can't. Maybe we can, but I, I wouldn't think we'd be able to say that because you you you're entering into a, a short term contract with a with a adjacent property owner for a parking space that that counts towards your yeah. zoning approval. Well, no, but nothing says the lots have nothing says the spaces have to be on the lot. There's nothing that says it has to be on the lot. You can rent the space because we told Davidson, but he couldn't fit him in. You know, you could rent some spaces someplace else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to show it in the. the you, he just has to show where that he is renting spaces. Yeah. yeah. I think you guys are onto something with the with the constrained lot, right? right. As determined by the zoning administrator or right. land use administrator, and. Wherever it's possible, like Ed said, that we can do 10 by 20, great. Right. 10 by if 20 it's a, is the, a unique lot like Kelleher's was. Right. 10 by 20 is what, can, we're, what we're saying. You can basically ask. But if you've got a constrained lot per the land use administrator, then we will go down to 9 by 18. So would you like me to, uh, or you, you should, or one yeah. of us can start changing right. it. I'm having trouble. Is the length, the suggested length, uh, 20 feet instead of 18. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Now, the alternative to for Kelleher was he originally wanted five units, isn't it six now? It's six. It's, it's six. six. Originally, it was five. And if he had gone ahead with five, he would have had space for long. Well, no, time. his original actually was six, also. It's just that we're in a different direction. He flipped them around. Oh, oh, he stacked them. Right, exactly. He stacked right. them. Originally, he was going to have the spaces underneath. <laughs> right, that's right. Now, are we? Uh, do we have to follow state guidelines for handicap spaces? That's federal, and yeah, yeah, federal. Yes. So that that is. He has to have. He has to have the one, the in, one space. And the dimensions right. is also. That's a, that's set up by that's the feds. By the feds. Yeah. And, and what do they require? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a small one. Yeah. We just it's put a smaller. Right it's a small with the four foot yeah. for um, yeah. wheelchairs. Yeah, we just bump all ADA to all the Fed guidelines. So it's like 13 feet guy. wide, total 13 yeah. wide. So what does it mean by aisle? One way, two way aisles? Two way aisle means. It, you're parked this car here, car here in order to back up. You've got to be able to get around. Because two ways is, is the right. ability for two cars to pass each other. Right. There's a one, one way aisle is a one just, way you road. You have to go one way. Or there's only one, it doesn't have to one be road. Wide. Well, OK, I, I, I thought that was the case, yeah. and I can't figure out why there's a difference. Uh, because you know, like, because on one way, you're, you're only the, the one way, you're only going one spots. way. Right. Whereas two way, you, you've got a car. Right. Well, it has nothing to do with backing out of the space. The two cars passing each other. Two cars passing. Passing two lanes on the road. Like, like on the road. Be, instead of a, I, I'm with you guys. I am. Yeah. Right. What I don't understand is why is. Why is 12 foot going to work? Up next to your building there. Um, this this dimension would be 12. This has to be 20. All right. right. How am I going to get a 20 foot car out of a with only 12 foot between they aren't worried feet. about you getting out they're just worried about you driving through <laughs> <laughs> so i'm, I, I'm, I'm scratching my head over saying that right the aisle's got to be 20 feet yeah yeah it's behind the very tough. period right y'all are driving many although i think what it is tim just a suspicion here turning right it's so well it only becomes a problem so if, if this the is, other this end is of the uh, 12 feet is a wall divided and then there's yeah. more spaces here oh uh, right. you have just the green space so in between aisles, have too. Feet. Exactly. If you have a, a wheel stopped, right. something stopped this in your can wheels, be, this can be 12. an issue. This right. has to be 20. Yeah. yeah. So still Basically, I don't I don't get that, Rob, because you've got, you can't get the car out of. You can't get a 20 foot, I know, yeah. a 12 foot space Absolutely. when you back out. It's tough. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's the, the little lot downtown by the real trail lots. 
Right. That's exactly what yeah, it is. Right. I don't park there for that reason. Right. Yeah. It's, just like, it's not. I made the mistake of parking my truck. You cannot the back out of there with a truck. Yeah. 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 Well, no one's saying you go in, and you come back, go to leave. <laughs> you screw me. As you go way down into beers. Yeah. My little car gets in and out of that right. Every time. Oh, that's it. Because you're ready to go out. Yeah, it still takes up two lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I agree with you. A 12, 12 foot aisle doesn't work. Yeah. It's, it's, I think you should just say 20 foot minimum right. uh, aisles. And because the downtown one yeah. is yeah. a two. Yeah. You still can't back. You can't back out. No, no, at someone's, all. Someone's behind you and on your sides. Right, you're in trouble. I'm just gonna play devil's advocate. Okay, so you make it 20 all the way across the board. You make the lot, the length of the space 20, and now you may end up with a stack up problem, right? So I'm just want to like be thinking about like if we continue to stack on all sides, you're you're gonna also change the number of lots you can fit within the whatever. It's a stack up problem. Right, so. Like, okay, so like you have one, two, three, four units of like you got flow, parking, flow, parking, right? So you just add eight feet to what would have been a 12. So you added eight there and then you added two, four, well, it's, it's, six. It's basically so you just added a lot, a, a significant amount of square footage. Like 60 feet. Yeah. It's, and it's, it has it. to be 60 feet. Yeah. Well, in order to have somewhere there's some engineering standards right right right, right exactly and i think exactly. we need to take a pause and, and yeah. get yeah. those and yeah and yeah, yeah. Them right. back. i'm not an engineer so i just started to envision right. how, how much because i doubt i doubt there's a 20 foot aisle probably yeah i don't even know what that feels like and or we just go to the parking lot that we feel comfortable with and just get off the paint measure this is i feel that, that i can just park yeah. on you know, you know, should the uh, Period tape measure and next parking lot you're in. Yeah, you like the co op, the Centera Park, the family, hospital. Family dollar. Family dollar. Family dollars parking yeah. lot works. Yeah. What yeah. is the width of that? Yeah. God, their, their aisle width has got to be 30 feet. I know. They, I mean, it's, they, run, their, they run their truck yeah. through. That's because they're, cause yeah. they're in yeah. the Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't well, that's the other just, thing. It's just retail. But, well, that's what but you, you don't need 30 feet to run, right. to run a, a tractor trailer. That's right. I suggest we move on to uh, yeah. Let's or move on to the next. What? Why is the earth there, Rob? Oh, sorry. I was going to get you the. Uh, He's traveling. Let's do that another time. OK. So. Um, the next deal is complicated. Yeah. Very complicated. So there, there are some abbreviations up in the upper portions of this section that I thought might read a better if it, it just listed out. That's just an opinion thing. Um, scroll down a bit, Rob. Yeah, this one I had a question about. You, you dealt with this probably in some of the site plan reviews you've done but i was thinking like a kelleher's case for instance technically if, if this is taken at, at, as it says uh the, the the fact that there's on street parking in front of the police station would count for his building which is a half a mile away right yeah so well no because it's not 24 7 parking because in the winter time, I don't think you can park on the street. No, it's anywhere it in town. Say twenty four seven parking. No, no, and that's everywhere in town. It's a town wide ban. Yeah, um, I mean, I I think it's lo it's a logical conclusion that you have to have the space available all the time. You mean for for housing for it to talk yeah yeah i would delete number three um basically then because yeah you cannot guarantee that there would be a space there for that person yeah and you know a guy comes home from work and it's the middle of a snowstorm and it's nine o'clock at night where's he gonna park his car <clears throat> well there's one thing about kelleher's proposal that i did like he actually 
actually showed an on, on street parking spot. And I specifically asked him that he had permission from DOT to do that. And he says, no, that's something we might be asking him. Now, it turns out we didn't require him to actually have that spot. But if an owner was able to uh, um, convince DOT or the town to create some on street parking, I think that maybe should count for his to his credit, even though his his tenants might not be able to always use it. It's certainly right. going to be a reserve spot. It's on street, though, public. Yeah, so other yes. people could take the Yes, street. that's right. Right. But which was the answer to his, well, what if there's visitors? Well, visitors are going to park They're on going to park the street. Right, right. Right. Which, right. I mean, visitors, yeah. But right. primary tenants? Um, no. If we're going to require X amount of spaces for something, then it has to be available 24-7. Well, yeah, but... Yeah, you're right. I think this was meant for retail. Number three was meant for retail, where yeah, well, it, 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 I yeah, know it, it doesn't. The yeah, that yeah. was the. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. I suspect that's what the intent of that yeah, is. Yeah, that's very far. Uh, I don't even remember reading. If that, I'm but. a restaurant like Mickey's, mm -hmm. people can park on Baltic Street. Yeah, because it's not. It's not all night. Would we want to encourage a, a, a property owner to to uh, to create public parking off off site from his uh, his project site and allow that to count towards his his, his totals? Well, I for, for a business, yes. yes. For residents, no. So that's going to be specified in there for right. a right. yes, yeah, like yeah, for Mickey. Just, He's, Mickey's has a deal with the with the, the Methodist Church, yeah. where they plow, he plows their row their driveway. They get to park. They can he can park people there at night. Right, but we didn't. I'm sure you guys didn't didn't factor that into whatever. Uh, we certainly didn't factor that into the changes he recently made. No, because he he meets that 500 square yeah. one space per 500 square feet. So, I mean, arrangements with an adjacent property owner right. are not legal and binding. They can change tomorrow. Yeah, that's the other problem there. Yeah. Right. And any of these, you're right. If you have yeah. a legally recorded right of way, it would be different. Right. Yeah. Right. And that was the right. issue Lebanon ran into with that downtown proposed right. complex. Right. Uh, 99 year off site lease for base spaces. Right. Type of thing. I, I think. We'd look favorable upon a, an apartment building uh, builder who couldn't get enough si uh, parking on, on on his site, but purchased a lot maybe a uh, yeah hundred feet away and created public parking. Um, you know, it, it increases the amount of parking in town. Yes, his tenants can't necessarily park guarantee themselves to park there, but uh, he's he's in. He, He's made an investment in the town. It's, it should count somehow towards his, his goal. Um, I just think I just think if it's going to be apartments, the the person renting that place needs to have a guaranteed spot to park. I mean, the landlord can tell him, "Oh yeah, there's plenty of parking, no problem." Right. And then he shows up, comes home, he's working nights, comes home, and there's no place to park. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. agree with they can. They can. Agree. Retail, resident, uh, commercial, retail stores, restaurants. If the customer can't find a place to park, they go somewhere else. Right. And it's on the business owner to make parking available for his customers. They can use that as a as an answer to the question: Where is a guest going to park? Yeah, they're going to yeah. park off site. Here's right. the off site right. parking. Yes. it's within 250 feet. Yeah, but if you're living there, you should. Be guaranteed a spot to park. We don't have a bus service here, right? You know, for the speed bump. You do have a point. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's not like a city bus service. No, no, I meant about the about you got everybody's got the guaranteed yeah. space. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So if if we're wordsmithing this. Um, 
Well, I think the Kurtz uh, uh, suggestion to take eight. three off completely, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah. Uh, we go with that? Yeah. Lead three. Strike three. Mm -hmm. Throw on down. Well, have we finished with um, no. number two? Number two. Yeah, we're, number we're two. avoiding number two. <laughs> I, I think we're we avoiding avoid it for now. <laughs> yeah, I think we might, might have. Let's take a brief look at the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Back. So there, if anybody can tell me how that chart is supposed to work, I should. I looked at that thing. I cannot. I have no idea what is that. What that's saying. Scroll down. Uh, even further. Let's let's get to the next section. Um, um, oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Is this in the Route Four district, or is this something? That was the Route Four. We built that for Route Four. I was going to say that looks like a Route Four thing. Yeah. Does it say that in the? It doesn't say it, but that's what that was built. That's what they Yes. Yeah. Okay. Scroll down, please, Ron. Um, yeah, this one I couldn't figure out what that was saying either. Oh yeah. What we didn't want was big parking lots. Like big empty parking lots. Left. Right. right. You've yeah. got. A, You've got a place like Mickey's and you've got 75 parking spaces and we're going well. The problem with that is you've got 75 parking spaces of asphalt. Yeah. Where water's running every place. There's no there's no surface for the water to go because you've basically asphalted your entire lot in order to have 75 parking spaces. I, I thought that might have been the case, yeah. but then I was looking at that and saying, all right, so we're going to require you to do a parking study to determine what. Stormwater management instead. Right. Well, you know, whether you actually need that. Whether you space. Not, you, right. Exactly. Right. Right. My argument. I remember right. talking about this when we were doing the parking before. Was that the regs? A lot of regs were saying you had to build the parking lot like a Walmart. Right. And the price chopper, and it's empty ninety nine percent of the time. time. Right. Or not? It's never, It's only full one percent of the year. Right. And but the instead you have to put this in. Right. And so. They put it in because they right. want to build a store. Right. Well, our regs don't say that. No, but that's that was where our older regs were leaning towards that. Right. And you're taking this blankets, national standard number of spaces required for this use, and it was right. just out of control mm -hmm. for a rural town like us. Right. Because the bigger the grocery store was, the more spaces you had to have. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, so well, the I more mean, seats in the restaurants. Having, uh, more seats, more yeah. parking spaces. And, yeah. Yeah. The, the 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 planning theory was you plan for the maximum number of people, right. yeah. which in the case of retail is you know right after Thanksgiving right. or the day yeah. after Christmas, yeah. 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 Right. and the rest of the time you know maybe twenty. I'm just making up numbers. Twenty or thirty yeah. percent yeah. of the spaces are vacant. Right. I, I never go to Walmart, but Home Depot. Have you ever seen that home lot full? Well. Yes. Well, <laughs> only <laughs> wait a minute. Yes, yes, it's full, but it's not full of cars. It's yes. full of car spaces, but not if because over half, half of that lot is Selling sheds yeah. and plants yeah. and all of that. Yeah, th I mean, there are other reasons right. you why. Right, there during the plague. Yeah. No. <laughs> right. I Seven think there are lots of reasons. Part of lunch. What one person okay. talking at a time, right. please? Jim. Well, they filled it, but it. But Dan's a good point because there is a lot of you know the activity with the sheds and stuff and the yeah. garden center and things like that that move into that lot that have to be considered yeah. in terms of the amount of space taken. But they have, I mean, the lot has the available parking spaces in that store. Uh, a year and a half ago, to two years ago, was daily at capacity. Jim, why are you leaving? Um, I got what I need. To do some testing, and you know, this isn't really something I'm going. People going to want to sit there and watch for too long. It's a planning you. meeting. I'll be on YouTube. Hey, we still have the owl. I'll be on YouTube. We have we have the other thing. Yeah. Um, Tim, 
Well, yes, I, I think the way it's to accomplish what I think is intended, I understand, uh, we need to wordsmith this a little bit because right now we're going to require you to submit a parking study before approving a project that includes more than twice the minimum amount shown. Uh, and, and I guess that refers to the, the number that's calculated in this section. Well, I think we should just spe spell it out, talk about scone stormwater drainage or drainage itself, and then talk about the fact that we don't want the parking infinitely large. Right? Because of drainage. But do we? Oh, well, well, not just only drainage, impervious, just, impervious land, surface. just land use. Yeah, yeah, yeah impervious know? surface. Basically, yeah. I mean, you know, to, to have a rationale is a good idea. I don't know that we necessarily need to explain explain our rationale for every single item in our zoning regs. Yeah, uh, just in terms of keeping, you know, trying to keep them uh, more readable. Well, I agree, but I don't think this is going to accomplish what, what you intended. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I think we need to do something here because the, the, the average reader is not going to understand what that means. Yeah. The, People in the room who helped create it, they know, <laughs> but I wouldn't have, to Tim's point. Well, and it backfired anyways. It did? Yeah, because we we said you, family dollar is the ideal one. The form said you, you can't, you had to have your parking on the side. You couldn't have it by the road. So you had to have the, what was it, a window? Yeah. yeah. So what did they put in? They put in a window that goes no place. And said, this is not the front. That's not a solar gain device that was carefully engineered. OK. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, to get it's, around the planning board. And all of the, all of the dollar stores try to do that. Right. And perhaps it was the, the fact that that was the first dollar store that came to Edfield and right. the board didn't know the, kinds of things that they, they tried to do. Right. Call it a learning experience. Well, they did, but they were pretty sneaky. That was pretty stuffy. Yeah, yeah. but well, they all do it. Well, I think uh, in, in the case of another retail place like that, and show on their site plan in a, a large parking lot, that to us seems excessive. Um, you would ask the question and say, well, you know, why, why so big? Well, we got this many parking spaces just from our daily routine, and then we have you know, some overflow and special right. sales days, yeah. and then we want some yard space for. Right. And we. Yeah, we, I I agree with you, Tim. I don't see where the parking study comes in. It's more of a. The the owner says this is what I feel I need, and if we tell tell him he can't have that many spaces, and he's ending up with people leaving because the space. Or full or, that we've told him he can have. Or he, you know, half the half the paved area is parking and the rest right. of it's not marked for anything. Right. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I'm just really it. it might be like a holdover from the older regs where you know we were requiring so much parking that really wasn't needed. And so maybe it's just a matter of um, I don't. I mean, there's the other half of the coin. The developer probably doesn't want to spend money on a parking lot that right. he's not going to. You know, he's never going to use. Right. And it just sits here and falls apart. Yeah. Well, it's not. That's uh, not our. Right. That's right. Not but not he doesn't want to be forced to, forced to put in pavements and stripe it. Yeah. Right. When no cars are ever going to park there. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've seen yeah. a lot yeah. of lots that when I was traveling around. Right. I mean, they were going to these back sections of parking lots that are growing grass. Right. Mm -hmm. What if we said, you know, any applicant that thinks they want more than, let's say, one and a half times the minimum or one and 170.75 or whatever the number is, they have to justify it to the planning board or 
get a special exception from the zoning yeah. board. Mm -hmm. Is that a way to handle it? Together, yeah. I just assume kill it. Yeah. I don't I don't see what it what it does for us. I won't object to killing it. Yeah. I think okay. go ahead. Yeah, go so, ahead. I said, I, I think a, a lot of that could be covered in the site reviews when they're building the building. You make that determination and and you negotiate what size parking lot based on your on your site plan. When you do the site plan review. That's where we should include that size of parking lots. Well, should we have should we keep the minimum then, which is pretty modest? Yeah, we can. Or, or you can just, you can just, space. You can just build it into your site plan review uh, regs. Wouldn't we be faced with the same problem of trying to come up with a standard by which we could administer it? Yeah, something something when when they come in for a site plan review. Um, you know, and we approve that site plan. We we can look at what their parking is, and we want some of it to be permeable so that they to take care of the water. We can do that, you know. But that can be all be negotiated. It doesn't have to be something written in stone, you know. That's my thoughts. Yeah, I think you two are talking about two separate things. We are. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, we have. I think we call them performance standards by which we evaluate the site plan. Yeah. And if we don't have any guidance, you know, an applicant can say, hey, I want one thing, and the board can say, well, no, you really can't have that many. And, you know, there, there's no, there's nothing that, the board can fall back on as a basis for making that decision. So if we have a standard in the site plan or in the zoning that says, you know, you can have up to two times the minimum, or if you want more than one and a half times the minimum, and I don't know what these numbers are, then this is the procedure. This is who you talk to. This is what you need to present in order to justify it. And then the board, whether it's us or ZBA, can say, yes, you know, this is what the standard says. You agree with it. Or no, you're just, you know, way out of line with the standard. We're not going to approve it. Yeah. I think we can put that standard in the site plan review and not have it necessarily go go before the ZBA. But we we can develop a standard to go with our site plan review and um, determine what size what we want. If you're going to go twice or whatever and then and then you negotiate from there. I, I, I understand you need a standard. You need something you need something to hang your hat on. You know I I here, I'm going to throw one out there. Okay. I will bet you. I will bet you that Jake's is, if not close to twice the minimum based on square footage, real close, and yet they're full all the time. You know, we use retail, and we don't think about. You know, there's a difference between a furniture store where people are in there yeah. for an hour, and Jake's where they're in there for two minutes, and those spaces are full. Full, plus they've got six or seven employees who have to have spaces, and that has nothing to do with the square footage. Because right. we're saying, you know, you've got five thousand square feet, which means you're supposed to have ten spaces. Well, and that's ridiculous. And that's ridiculous. That's why I think why we need to get rid of that because it should be up to the owner how many spaces they need because they know what their business is. As long as they meet the minimum, and as long as they meet. The, Exactly. As long as they meet the minimum, if they don't make enough spaces, it's up to them. It shouldn't be up to us to say you got too many spaces. And then they come back a year later and say, you were wrong. I didn't have it. You wouldn't let me have enough spaces. So I've got to 
come in with a new site plan in order to add some space at some place. I just can't see yeah. it in a situation where we're having this happen in, right. in our town. I, it's, that, that we would really regret not having left this in. Right. Um, yeah. I'm trying to stretch my imagination here to say what would happen that, that we would, oh shucks. We yeah. Didn't. So we kill it? Kill it. I would. I would kill it. Strike eight. Yeah. Well, we strike the whole thing. It's a little bit different. Um, that center section that I didn't highlight was actually a, a pulled it out as a separate paragraph. I think you might need to keep that. Yeah. Can you think of an example? Well, what it's saying is if it doesn't fit the chart, right. which is up above, then we may need to do a parking set. Yeah. So I don't know that we need to keep that. I'm just suggesting. Well, well, maybe just the last line. The planning board may require, require. and just say may require a study to quantify. Yeah, not instead of shell. Yeah, so shell. Yeah, may. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah may. Just yeah. make it may, yeah. and it leaves it open to, yeah. if he's coming in with something that looks just on paper, looks ridiculous. Right. Either too little or too much. Yeah. Well, we can say, yeah, you're going to you're going to justify this. I mean, you know, you, you look at a furniture store, for instance, mm -hmm. which has, let's say, 50,000 square feet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, the, the you know, little, you've only got somewhere. maybe six customers that are in there at any point in time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just so dependent on the business right and then you have jake's at nine thousand or ten thousand square feet mm -hmm. and you know you've got what maybe 30 customers in there at a time i don't know yeah. a lot you can yeah, yeah. well yeah it's you can always get, get enough and you can always get a space around right. on, the, on the may street side right or a dunkin donuts the next section, I should, uh, the next section <laughs> Only surface parking spaces shall be used. I don't think we need that. No, I couldn't figure no, out. That's, that's yeah. silly. Yeah. And, and then this next one about the rail trail, it's like, what are you doing in here? Uh, it seemed to be an odd place to tuck this. I think I got what it's saying that if you're going to advertise on the rail trail that gas is nearby or that we've got a restaurant. 150 no. yards down the road, then you think that's bicycle trail. Because Mickey's has one. Right. You on need to have a rail. Trail. You, if you're going to, yeah. If you want to sneak out onto the rail trail and stick your sign, you have to put a bike rack. You there. have to put a bike rack. Although I, your... I do agree that the placement is dubious. Right. Yeah. So let's maybe find a different spot in the ordinance. Well, if we're going to change it, it, it the, the wording needs to be changed. I mean, it, we don't own that property. That's our problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Creating. I I think we should strike it. You know, if a business wants to I, wants wants to get people riding the bikes to come to their place and they don't have a place to park their bikes, they're, they're not going to show up. If a business puts a sign up on the rail trail, knowing he's he's trying to entice bikers to come to his residence, right. he's going to fix something for he, him. He's going to put the bike yeah. rack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We don't have I to. Tell him to do that. Yeah. He's going to put it. the bike rack if he wants to. Yeah. I'm leaving my bike. In the bike right. Right. I thought yeah, yeah, the yeah. Business, business has to have the bike rack. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it is. The business that has to have the bike rack. Children can. If you're advertising, you have to have a bike rack, is what it's basically saying. But we don't think it's necessary. It's not. Right. It's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. Well, not that the bike rack's necessary. We don't think the closet. The closet is necessary. Right. Yeah. You know, if if the business is it trying is certainly to, not a part of. Who, I've never enforced. It. Well, you can't. You can't oh, you're because your job, Rob. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, Just, uh, so okay, so we have a sign on the rail trail. I'm not even touching this. <laughs> I don't know. Are there signs on the list? Side? There are. Yes, there are. House of Pizza. Mickey. Yeah. Mickey. House of Pizza. House of Pizza has one. Yes. 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 Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' has one. Yeah, they're they don't. They're there. Not that I know. Right. Down my name. House of Pizza. Right. So if you back up, I think that's the bottom of the section. Um, yep. 
Uh, before you back up, okay, I, I would propose that uh, a food service and restaurants be struck from retail because yeah. it doesn't fit <coughs> in terms of number of spaces. So do that too. So not the whole thing. Just food service and restaurants. It's actually, you know, I think you could strike the whole thing. Yeah, yeah strike it. Okay. Is there more down below here? All right, because that would Go be a up. definition. Oh, no, yeah, just your yeah. definition. There's more. Yeah, there's more. I forgot. Okay. You're right. You're right. Yeah, if we're going to start making definitions, then you need a definition section up front, not afterwards. I agree with you, Kate. I don't know why that was down here. Because yeah. sometimes we don't always. Align everything yeah. nice and yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, you'll go through this next year and you'll find other <laughs> things like, what is this doing here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. So we want a good board definition. I'm going to get back to my John Clute because he said it every year. You can only put so much stuff on the ballot. Yep. Yep. And we'll get real close to how much we can put on the ballot, especially with seven, with pages, seven pages of, what? of flood. No, I can't count. So that's. It's mandated. Yeah. It's a ballot though. No, it's the mental, like people get like, they start flipping and they get confused. And if you sit there, you see them, they come out and they're like this with their papers and yeah. they're trying to stick it in and the, the other, spot. The other side of it is they can't spend 25 minutes on a ballot. Right. And that's what yeah. that's what you're getting to with. But I think we, which maybe that's why we do it at the floor meetings. If we, we can. can. Like we can. We can. can. You can't, zoning changes cannot be done at the floor. Zoning mm -hmm. changes are ballot issues. So when you rewrite your entire zoning ordinance, there's no way you reprint the whole thing, though, right? Like, is no. that the way around? That's this? what I told Rob. We'll research your how to do that seven-page flood thing. I don't think we need to put the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, because I think yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, because the whole new zoning ordinance is you're approving a zoning ordinance. Right. You're approving a whole new. Way around it, but then we have to wait another second, right? I think right. we can just put the Warren article on for the flood one and then reference them where to go to look at it. But we'll research that. Yeah. Um, and we make it public by by putting it on the town website. Mm -hmm. No, right. absolutely. And does that? We'll make it public. Oh, that's right. the right. right. I can't see why you can't just do this line. As long as you're outside the rail, that's an interesting thing. So the rail starts over the door. Can we go over the door? Folks, can we come back and stop having individual conversations? Because the people in TV land can't understand any of it. Um, Tim has another document. Can you bring that one up? Well, no, not yet. Yeah, not yet. Uh, we got three. We got three more lines here. Um, we really, we don't want to miss them. These uh, definitions, they seem to me, really need to be in the back in the appendix. Um, yeah, because it, they, you're right. They're definitions. They're, they're not. Yeah, no ordinances. And, and they're and not. One of the three is in the appendix. The other two aren't. Yeah, uh, they all. So we can make those changes. But we in the, in years past, if we're if we're just moving them without changing them, we can move them. Right. But if you're changing them, they have to go on. I think you're going to need to change them also. Okay. They, they felt a little loosey-goosey to me. But anyway, if you scroll back up just to kind of re-look re at what we did, uh, I think we know what we're doing with this one. Yeah. Although the, oh, there only be one other consideration. Right. Um, maybe that could be. Be folded into one of the things above. We didn't look at any of this. That's a that's, that's a federal, federal mandate. Uh, oh, that's ADA. Okay, right. that's ADA right. federal right. mandate. Yeah. Um, this thing, like I said before, I have no idea what that's trying to say. So I think Ed, it, go ahead. You can explain it, right? No, I'm. I'm gonna say, you, <laughs> you can't. Can you? Can we just go forward and bring you guys back yeah. some parking stuff? Right. stuff. There, yeah, just yeah. look online. 
I mean, I say yeah. Rob, a couple things. There's some, yeah. I don't want to call them national standards, but there's some university right. research and things on right. Yes. Yeah. Demand. Okay. Let's let's yeah. come back to this another time. Uh, yeah. Have we have we beat parking to death here? Yeah, we have. Want to open up the next document? Uh, next topic is let's do structure definitions permit permanent versus temporary and carve out for setbacks huh? <laughs> what are you i don't see that up there well i i certainly didn't tempt that one that's well, a new one wasn't all right sure where to go with it um what else have you done tim let's just have one here that let's does. do it let's do with let's go with what we got well, this one was near and dear to my heart um but i ended up really changing a lot in here and or suggesting a lot of changes and i i almost think i should send it to you guys and yeah. think about it for a week and yeah can i just ask the question um because i think non-conforming lots are going to be a really interesting discussion vis-a-vis -vis where master planning ends up taking us so there's federal funding i don't know if we're going to get any i'm hoping we're applying I won't make any promises. I'll leave that to you too, folks. But um, I think there's a lot of money out there to go through our zoning right now. Hopefully, we could be applying for it and do. This seems like that seems like a major project to me. Just my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, is. It, it, it is. And I, I think it's really it a worthwhile one. Um, I just don't know if we'll solve it this year. And no. Yeah, that, right. there's ten thousand dollars available right now for every town in the state of New Hampshire for, for planning. Or don't, master don't, we have, don't we have to have it? No, isn't that for zoning though? Zoning. Uh, for housing. For housing. housing, zoning. housing. Yep. But don't we have to have a, a master plan approved in order to be eligible for those funds? No, I, that, I don't believe that was. <laughs> they the said, they I don't know if it's the same, but in Massachusetts, the town, towns, um, my old town just got $100,000 for the master plan. Well, no, the, the legislature put out $2 million and said every town gets 10 thousand dollars huh. and there's 200 pounds and unincorporated in new hampshire everybody gets ten thousand dollars for planning nothing about master plans or okay. anything Great. you just got ten thousand we just paid ten thousand dollars you gotta ask for it okay and if we don't spend it all we gotta give the rest to <laughs> ask for more so yeah so let's spend it and spend somebody else's so who, yeah. who's gonna make the big ask ed yeah, we'll work on it. Okay, yeah. Kurt? Um, I got one of my notes. It was actually on non-conforming lots. And I'm just reading through it because I wasn't even sure if it was in there or not. Um, when, it's use, when there's a change of use, that's the grandfathering goes right. away. It doesn't continue with the new use. Yeah. And Correct. Awesome. Well, you, you scroll down there a little bit to that section. Right there. Is abandoned or discontinued for any reason? For, yeah. Mm -hmm. One year or more. Right. right. And I added a bunch of stuff there. In theory, I could talk, but we don't want to try to wordsmith that tonight, I don't think. Uh, that whole life, my whole point, I guess, and our approach to this was just thinking about the. Uh, Donkley. 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 Yes. Donkley. Thank you. Um, the gravel pit so that uh, owner dies his estate is in a, in turmoil um, they're not paying attention to what the gravel pit is not doing for a period of time and it seemed that we sh should allow for that kind of thing to happen let's say you had a uh, an excavation business in a residential district and the business had been there for years and years uh the owner dies or the patriarch dies and, and you know the family's trying to figure out what to do and it, it just seemed to me that, that the one year period was pretty dang confining and I'd, I'd like to see some kind of mechanism by which they could say we we realize we we need to at least ask the town within a year or tell the town within this year that we want to continue this business we just 
just not sure how yet and allow them some time to sort all that through. That's what, in general, I was thinking we should try yeah. to build into this thing. Jim, I, um, I think your your issue here, or the issue with the, the whole Conkey pick, is that you've got two different sets of regs applied to the same situation. I agreed, but and, I, di I didn't want to try to deal with the site, right. the excavation. Right. Technology. But... I, I think part of the idea of limiting abandonment to one year is that if somebody, I don't know, let's say their house partially burns down or becomes uninhabitable, the idea is that, you know, if you let it extend indefinitely, it becomes a, an attractive nuisance and a, and a blight in the town. <laughs> And I think a year is is a pretty common amount of time in in many towns and cities. And as long as you know, I mean, the way Rob ruled for the Conkey thing was as long as the use is not changed, it exists, even if it goes dormant. But he had to, and he did an admirable job coming up up with an explanation of that reading a lot into the ordinance and yeah know. i mean the con the concrete bed um not to cut you off too much but was a separate issue a completely separate issue than a grandfathering clause type of thing you have camps that are non are non-conforming lots regardless of what our zoning is even if if it's in already say you have a commercial business in a residential right. which is now a residential zone right. so ever since zoning was enacted that business was there but it but houses grew up around it right so it got zoned right. residential by default right um the business say a contractor's yard with dump trucks and backhoes and all kinds of fun things um it's grandfather is still active the owner is still running the business um but then the owner dies the family doesn't want anything to do with the business well, maybe somebody they do, maybe they do, and the state's tied up in probate. It's, but there, but it's a but it's a right. business. There's a company name attached to that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't just say because one person stops working there, the business goes away. So, but if they stopped using that business, and um, the company dissolves, but the other side that. of that is it's a plumber, and the plumber dies. And it takes you more than a year to find somebody to buy the plumbing business. He hasn't he hasn't abandoned the use, right? That's right. what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, he hasn't company, abandoned, he's still he hasn't abandoned company. the use. So you can't you can't tell him you can't because tell him it's non-conforming. You can't right. you can't tell Jamie Martin's estate because it's non you're in a non-conforming residential that you lose your ability to have a plumbing business there because Jamie Martin died. Right. And the right. family goes, we need to find Find somebody, and it takes them more. It'll take more than a year to find somebody to build to buy the business. But it's still I a agree. registered. It's still a registered thing. Business. It doesn't even have to be right be, be, because you know what. Once once Jamie don't want to wish him dead. Right. Uh, <laughs> the quarantine. <laughs> you know but that's it. It's the, the the business is there, and it hasn't been replaced by anything else. Right. That's right. the point. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, right. My point, my, my notes were, was I was thinking more in terms of like the roller skating ring. Um, yeah. It was a roller skating ring. Then it became a doggy park that never happened, but on paper, it was a doggy park right. thing. And now it's a building something or other. That's, it, it, it's a service. A service. Is it a conforming but, use? But the use has complete, can constantly changed. Right. But that sign sitting on Route 4 is still there. That's and my that's issue. Your that's what I don't like. It's my because <laughs> Why there was a non-conforming sign from the you beginning. Tell me. Wait, wait did you guys stop no. arguing in, until, yeah. until right. the I mean, that finishes? Sign, that sign was non-conforming when it was a roller skating rink. But it's still there three businesses later. Mm -hmm. So that should not have... So someone had massive floodlights 
our ordinance says they have to be all full cut off, shine down, night sky compliant, all that fun stuff. But they're still still there, even though the businesses have changed multiple times. That's, that's, that's our fault for not doing the site plan review and requiring him to right, change. But there should be something levels. in there that says it was grandfathered for the first business because it was pre existing. But now you have a completely new business in there. You're doing a site plan review. All that grandfathering stuff needs to be eliminated. Mm -hmm. I mean, the law, the IRS, laws, the court, I should say the laws, the courts argue that the purpose of zoning is to make everything more compliant and they don't favor grandfathering things forever. That's I, I, I agree. So and then that's why you have this one year restriction mm -hmm. type of thing so that someone can't just say, well, I had a camp there 50 years ago, so I'm going to continue with my camp. Right. Uh, I, don't think anybody, I don't think anybody's disagreeing with, well, to speak for everyone else. I'm not disagreeing with you, Kurt. I'm just saying that the, the, the one year is awfully confining to uh, business that or, or whatever the non-conforming use is um, in circumstances that that can get wicked complicated and, and, and it's a property owner it's their investment it's their livelihood in some, um, some way yeah I can see if it was a hot and fast but they do have the option to come and ask for an extension well, that's what I wanted to build in. Was right. Okay, I, I haven't that's read what, what you. Yeah, yeah. So don't, exactly. don't worry about what I read. It, the, the theory was that you could you could say, hey, my non-conforming use uh, uh, grandfathering is about to lapse. I'd like to come see the zoning administrator and say this is when my non-conforming use started, and I, I'd like an app. I'd like to extend this for, and I said up to two more years, so a total of three. Right. I mean that that option I can agree. With. Accepts. How that's uh, how we write that yeah, is right. You know, and the other thing was very similar. If you if your building burns down, your non-conforming uh, building, whether it's on a conforming lot or a non-conforming lot, the building's non-conforming for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I also thought that if you file your building permit within that year, you ought to be given a couple of years to to get it done. I, yeah, I don't. Know. Isn't that kind of the way it is now? No. Yeah. Oh, it says you've got to have it done in a year. Yeah, we so construct it. Still in there. There. It's, it's yeah. In use, yeah. Well, it's, it has to be up and running, occupied within a year. That's that's uh, unrealistic. Yeah. Right. Can, yeah. Actually, now it's a budget. I, I, yeah. I can see for a, a structure, you get your building permit within a year. Yeah. And you, you need yeah. some time now yeah. to build. Right. You, know, you need time to build. I mean, COVID-19. Yeah, right, right. 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 Number, yeah. number five covers that that issue. You have to file your building permit within a year, and then you have two years to s substantially complete your construction. Mm -hmm. So that's a total of three years from the time that your building burns down or floats away or whatever. That, that doesn't sound unreasonable to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. do you need more time? I mean, you can come back for an extension. If you will, it was like okay, and, and justify why you need more time. Other than, yeah, so I haven't been doing anything for two right. years, but I, and then it felt like if okay, if you're going to replace a non-conforming building, let's say on a waterfront property, on the same footprint, but if you shifted it a little bit, you're then able to meet the setbacks. Left and right, maybe even the, to the water itself. Why wouldn't we want to allow that? Well, it would be a ZBA thing. That's all. It's not that you wouldn't allow it. You'd you'd be building a conforming building. Well, no, um, but still non-conforming. So okay. The lot's non-conforming. Okay. The building is what it is. In that case. We'll let you build on a non-conforming lot if you, uh, if as long as you meet the setbacks. Yep. Yeah. 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 So if the footprint of the non-conforming Forming building on a non-conforming lot was a, right on the water's edge, yep. and the owner says, "Building burned down. I'd like to move it back away from the water. Why wouldn't we agree to that?" 
We do. You would agree to it. We do. So why if you improve the the nonconformance? So well, that seems to be a decision that could easily be made at your level rather than go to the You're getting into some site specific things. It's say your buildings within the 50 foot. It's on a nonconforming lots, and it's also within the 50 foot setback of the water line. The building burns down. He wants to move it away from the 50 foot setback, but still only go 25 feet instead of 10 feet. Mm -hmm. He's still not conforming. On he, would, he would need a variance for that. He, right, he would need a variance. Now, chances are he would get it because he's making it less non conforming. Right. But, but he's still. So I guess, uh, I guess we're saying the same thing, I think, Kurt. I'm just saying, couldn't that be a, a something that is handled at Rob's level? No, no. Yeah. You, you run into too many. I would ask that you write that in, just from a point of why would an applicant have to go spend the two hundred dollars plus notice all the abutters to make something more conforming than it was? I think that's something that should mm -hmm. be able to be handled at Rob's level. I, I would have preferred that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we can demonstrate yeah, that it's making it less non-conforming, yeah, for a um, I mean, we've done that before the show. You have to do a state survey. Right. Okay, that's not cheap. Yeah. You got to go to O'Neill uh, and get a survey, and then I get an attorney because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, and it was eight grand by the time I was done to get my very, which I didn't use. <laughs> Still didn't build it, huh? <laughs> Too expensive. Yeah. That's my issue. My problem. Yeah. But and interesting. Then I attempted to make some. I was thinking about Rob's great speech on, on why the what's a good speech why the uh, gravel pit was was not abandoned. And I said, gosh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but could we somehow clarify that? What does abandonment mean? Well, I was yelling at my computer screen when I was watching that video because I was completely opposite of what he was saying. Yeah. So <laughs> most of what I was citing was actually court. That was court precedent. Well, well whether or not it was, and, and whether or not it, you agree with it or not, I think it would be better if we had a more defined right. notion of what that means. I, I think, think maybe we need a little bit more legal advice because the other lawyer said, if your ordinance has a specific time clause or time frame during which after which abandonment occurs, that supersedes all of the court cases that you were citing. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. So I would have believed abandoned. You're saying if it was abandoned, you start the 12 month clock. But I said it wasn't abandoned. Right. So. And his <laughs> lawyer was getting 300 bucks from him. <laughs> <laughs> and our lawyer right. was getting it from us. So that's why we went with our lawyer. No, no, I, I, I realize that. <laughs> and My lawyer didn't agree to go with another lawyer. Yeah. Right. No, no. You know, we, we ought to get a lawyer to tell us who which lawyer is right. So maybe we get a third lawyer. <laughs> or, or, third party, or, third party or, or we ask the municipal association attorneys. They're free. We like our attorney's answer. We're going to stay with it. <laughs> well, I mean, one of my notes is, and it doesn't have to be out the zoning because it's at a select board ordinance level, is rewrite our gravel pit ordinance to match what the state law is. There is some conflicts there, right, right, right there. So, and mm. We put in right. there the we have a gravel pit ordinance of oh, okay. town and it's out of date by like 10 years. Is that um, excavation regulation? Yeah. It's yeah. not in zoning. No, it's, it's a in excavation. It's a, yeah. 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 But it's a, this is not a, zone, a planning board. Excavation. No, I believe it's a select boards. What the excavation permit? State. The ex local excavation regulation. We have our own ordinance. That's our that, ordinance. That's, that's not a planning board ordinance. Yeah, right. And but but the planning board is the group that it, that it's administers it. Absolutely, it's yeah. a governing body. Yeah. Right. So, so, I mean, I like to see something that matches on the state website. They have a model ordinance mm -hmm. um, for gravel pit ordinance, and I just think just take that as what they have. 
and but adopt it as ours. It's it's laws. It's we there are RSAs that right. Well, this, well, well, there's a paragraph on the RSAs, but right. then you can write your own ordinance on ordinance, and the state has a model one that we can adopt. It's like the flood thing. Well, the models, their laws. We can't. They can't. I, right, I think the select board. Let, let's let our select board members speak to this. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of doing all the projects and all the things all at once, which isn't actually that popular in this town. Um, and so I would say in the interest of not overwhelming people, we make a list A and a list B of things we really should do this year and things we should continue to talk about, because there's nothing wrong with continuing to talk about and making forward progress progress, um, but maybe we get, get a priority listing so that we we have some direction and we don't overwhelm people um, because when you give them too many things, they think you're trying to pull the wool over there. I mean, it's well, a public hearing at the select board saying we're adopting this new ordinance. Oh, I understand, That's but they are, yeah. already think that we're trying to do like 600,000 things. So I'm well, just, there's no money involved, so it's okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, we have had things recently that probably have no money involved and it's you know it's very hard for people to have a lot of I'd also recommend we not do it in the middle of this county issue. Yep. Right. If we're changing rules now right. it's not yeah. Good point. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because one party or another is going to be upset. Mr. Right. Chair. My right. battery has died. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we I would like to devote a little bit of time tonight to discussion about some density housing. OK, because that's the thing that my me per personally, I think is going to make us some hay. I mean, these other things great, but. We want to change the upper valley and want to be a part of the, the solution for housing. I think we need to get on this and, there's a lot of and as I said to you. Sure, we want to be informed by our master plan when we're mm -hmm. Off the master plan, but we have been informed by the master plan. I think we pretty and much. I don't think we wait going. another eighteen months to right. do something about it. I agree. I, agree. I would agree. I agree. And, and so you guys had a couple of good ideas it. for the R one, where there's sewer and water, and you also had a good idea. I thought you it was your idea for the ADUs. Mm -hmm. So what? Accessory dwelling units. Oh yeah, that's a really great. Can we not limit I, them? I think ADUs are the simpler ones, so let's talk about those first. Um, there's a a really good article on ADUs and the future of housing in the Atlantic. Um, if you guys have an opportunity, I can send it to Rob. But I think it's a it's a very timely discussion that's being had all around the country. It's not can unique. To um, it, I feel like it just came on. I can't. It did. It. Okay. I read it too. Yeah, it was an yeah. excellent article. I, it just really was one that may, I'm not trying to convince you one way or another, but it was one that promoted really good thought. Um, so I know as a resource. So we we currently. Allow one ADU per lot in any district, even if it's a non-conforming lot. If somebody can squeeze it in, sure. Because there's no acreage requirement. Right. The the ADU can either be inside the existing building on a non-conforming lot, or if there's room, it can be a separate building. In other words, if but, you the, have, but the separate building would would follow the setbacks and. It would have to yeah. follow the system. Mm -hmm. It would have to, uh, you know, for for example, if you had, if I had a two acre lot in the R three zone, and I had a barn that I wanted to convert to an ADU, yep. as long as the apartment wasn't over what 800. is eight hundred square feet, it's fine. Ed, I just say instead of talking too long about the one ADU, that's also state law, so right. that's not something. We can change. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So we can talk about two additional. <laughs> yep. Maybe two or more. So. Um, I mean, my feeling is if it if the septic system meets it, then you can have as many ADUs as you want, as long <laughs> as the septic meets it. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, like, you're getting into other issues when you I, go yeah. unlimited. You're, you're getting to apartment complexes. You're Getting into parking, you're getting into septic, and how do you prove the septic can handle it? Well, I I think you can take 
you could take a situation like that and, 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 and engineer it so it would work. Um, so there would definitely be a requirement if you're going right. to add eight ADUs in, in your barn behind your thousand square foot home. Yeah, you. Right. We're not just going to make that a blanket. Well, that's, okay. that's sort of what I was hearing. It was just a, it was by right. So you wouldn't even come here. It would just go to the building inspector. And he would have to say whether or not your septic meets the number of bedrooms. The it's number of bedrooms. Board. It's very unusual to have a septic that goes over four, four right. as a standard. Exactly. It's very unusual. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's pretty easy to. Um, right. I mean, I've got, a, I've got a two bedroom house with my septic, which is only 10 years old, mm -hmm. has is for four bedrooms. Yeah. And it's built for four bedrooms. So I have a farmhouse. House. Right. And mm -hmm. I had that I'm right on that cusp, right? Of what do you do? And I said to myself, if I put in a garage and a, an accessory dwelling unit over that, I, I would have to give it a separate septic anyways. Right. So that's how we decided. But I think those decisions are going to be informed right. by the building inspector mm -hmm. and current law and not necessarily by mm -hmm. us formulating them. Um, I do think that I just want to harken back to like respecting our heritage. You used to keep your in laws, your or, you know, mm -hmm. uncle or aunt or whoever didn't get married or for whatever reason. And I think we're making it so people can't age in place together with their family in a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, and I have real concerns about people being forced to occupy a house that would hold eight or 10 people mm -hmm. because there's nowhere else to move when you want to live in Enfields, right? And I think we want to allow people to live and age in their home. If you make it so that you can, you know, have either a child or a niece, that would whoever be there with you i mean i'm not saying that's what every one of these units is going to do but i think it, it it is a very old tradition and a lot of the homes in this town the older homes when you read the history book yeah. you know, had that history so i think it has a good basis here and i think it's a really good idea to consider yeah, my only concern was unlimited it's just oh, i think there should be a number well the limit the limit is the septic obviously but i don't know maybe you would have to have a limit in town okay so I, start just add the second second parking. Yeah. Well, we can add the second one. I would look at limiting the building on a lot. Yeah. That's, I think that's yeah. where you need to draw that line. If you can fit right. to existing buildings, you don't even know they're there and right. comply with state law. For and sure. one other building. Because as it sits now, you can only have two buildings, right? We're not changing that. Well, well, Here's me uh, throwing out another. Okay, one so detached ADU, having one detached ADU. Okay. okay, having a guest house though in this day and age, if you happen to be so lucky to have one, um, if you work remotely now, Enfield has a lot more broadband, right? We're talking a lot about broadband, and being able to have like a guest house that is your office with their small kitchen or whatever, right. it's it's a big deal. Um, I work in my home office, which is in my home, and I've seen a difference in other. People and you know maybe there's uh, you guys have all probably heard some barking. I would mm -hmm. use that as my example. So I think just being open to the idea that maybe you allow a home, a home for mom, dad, grandma, or vice versa. You you have kids that are just and because you don't want to say oh I have a garage with one. I I get worried when we start limiting people's uses of their property. I don't think you need to have like a mini and condominium complex, but I think there's a reasonable way to work this out, out that's more mm -hmm. traditional and. Yeah, I mean, I think that the big the big selling point of the ADU originally, and Enfield was early adopter there, so it was Plainfield, my hometown, mm -hmm. before the state adopted its state law, was that you can you can shoehorn an ADU into existing right. complex, yeah. and you can drive by and you can say, right, right, right. right. I, I, no, I have no problem. No, I have no problem. No. Yeah, I, no problem. Yeah, I think yeah, you can go to two ADUs yeah. and yeah, drive by. Not tell if there's yeah. there, you know, like yeah. if I, I want to see a bunch of small the building, separate, I would say up to one a, a detached, 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 but you could have another ADU in your in your main house. Right. Yeah, so something yeah. like that, I think. Yeah, would. thinking about myself, I would love to have you know three apartments, total one for me and one one, one in the house and one detached. Right. You right. know that that would be awesome. I think. Right. I mean, when and you, you can drive by my house and not even tell. The, why would you allow that? What's that? Well, why don't we, we just allow that? That's that's what I we want to do. Yeah. I have to say because the ADU is the easiest housing to add. It well, really I, is. I agree with you, but 
I don't know. I'm kind of with um, just Kylie on that. I, I, I just can't see why we need to, to fix up a number. I mean, if, if you took a, a large Victorian in town mm -hmm. that's currently a single family home and someone wanted to carve that up into <laughs> four or five uh, apartments, Parts. what would currently be the the restrictions or the process that they'd have to go through. Right now, the R1 is acreage. You know, if you don't have the acreage, you can't do it. You can't do it. Dwelling unit is based on number of acres. You okay. can have, have the you can have an ADU without additional acreage, but you can only have one ADU. So if you and if you're in a, down, I mean, either either attached or detached, you right. can have one ADU in Angie. Right. So what's so, the difference then? But, but if you if you wanted to add a second ADU right now, you couldn't do it. Okay, but you'd need three acres in the R1 to have three residential units. I'm but, talking downtown, right? Is that R1? So it would be an acre, an acre and a half for three. Is is, is downtown R1? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. No, downtown's is uh, CBs. CBs. So it depends on where you are. Well, I Shaker Hill Road where there's septic, say, yeah. where there is where there's sewer. Yes, right. That's R1. Yeah. That's R1. So why don't we at least Take it to two, and we can always. I don't, that's a good place to start. Yeah, right. to start. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would, it would absolutely blow people's mind in the state too, because nobody else has done. I haven't seen this. Has anybody else done done this? No. No. Right. I think the other thing it would do is, right now, homes in Enfield are relatively difficult to afford, and some of the bigger ones that maybe need some TLC and a remodel. This is just my personal opinion from looking at real estate and I know Ed looks at real estate so he maybe can speak to it but I feel like um say you're on the cusp of being able to afford it but you wanted to be right make sure it's financially you were being financially responsible especially for like a newer resident or somebody just starting oh, yeah. out it's a great way to say uh you can turn this piece into two and it may be a starter home for you and it might be an apartment building for someone else some other day you know mm -hmm. it, it it's a great way to make Enfield more attractive to you Residents and yep. okay. is, is there any downside that anybody can think of? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> attached ADU. Um, attached or detached? Detached. Detached, detached ADU. Um, all right. You've got a nice looking home. Most people don't want to degrade that nice looking home by putting an ugly detached unit in there, but some people will. And then you have uh, the neighbor who's also probably now facing a loss of property value. So I don't know how, how one would do this, but you know, the ADU has to match the architectural character of the home that's there, or is that, well, we is that a can of What, can't. what, so what, what if you say the ADU, if it's a detached ADU, has to be within an existing outbuilding? In other what words, about Construction. You do. Yeah, so that's you have to allow, allow it. The problem is the state law says you have to allow that yeah. one detached. State law. Yeah, that's okay. the state that's law. All we're, all that. we're adding is we're adding you can have one in your primary building. Yes. Well, why don't we just do do that then? Just say you can have one detached and one um, attached. Attached. Well, what I what I'm saying is you can have two, so that you can have two in your principal if you. If you're able to, correct. But you can't have that detached, also. But you can have. You, you can make a max of two. It's a max of two. It's a max, max of two. two. Detached or detached. detached. Right. Detached. Only one can be detached. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you talk yourself down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is where you start. Why, why couldn't you have two in a, in one detached building? If you had a big old. Okay. If you had a big right. old okay. barn that okay. was 1,400 okay. square feet, and I'll go. With that. You could put. Yeah, two, I'm just saying you separate. can't have you can't have two detached. I will tell you two, two separate buildings. Separate buildings. Separate buildings. Separate buildings. I, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. I agree with that. I, I will care. tell you what. I what will want draft to. something for that so you guys have yeah. something for the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I talked myself out. I'd go four, but that's just while me. we're on the subject. I would go four too. Yeah. I mean, the, like density. Celie. She just. What do you oh, Celie. I'm sorry. A lot of the historical houses are huge. Right. And that that would really. 
very nicely. Yeah, but it's well, I mean, yeah, under the under the president goal that right. under the present zone, you couldn't have the Hughes House as it is. You could. I mean, certainly historically, you've got these old houses that right. started out as one house, and then you know the kid grows up and takes a spouse, and you build an L, and then you build another L, and then you've got this big rambling farmhouse that's all one structure, and there's no reason why you can't have individual families and just put up a wall. All without a door. So no one wants to share a kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I want to add. Ed, oh, I was going to say, you guys also have to understand that these will have to meet building codes. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. Oh, yeah. They have to have their own electric panels and those things. Right. People aren't going to just. Well, the detached has to have its own septic tank also, right? Yeah. It could be on the same leach no, meter, right? but it has to have its own tank. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a yeah. lot of loop. Limiting factors. On how close they are, yeah. Celie, go ahead. I was going to. Add, I was going to tell you. I was on uh, the road that goes around Half Moon Pond, mm -hmm. and I saw these tiny houses, one after another, that somebody had brought in. I they got them. Maybe they built them there. I don't know. But I said, by God, someone's got an idea, oh, and no. they went. And I just know they probably subdivided these little lots, and one after another, these little tiny houses yeah. perfect for somebody oh yeah perfect mm -hmm. have you seen them yes mm -hmm. aren't they great oh yeah tiny well that's water, the kind of stuff that if you go down down to water there's basically a group of about 15 of them that are just and it's great it looks like a lovely little community <laughs> and i'm sure it's a collective septic system and each and they probably don't even have to have their own individual tanks question can an adu be a trailer Long as it's less than eight hundred square feet. Well, you mean a mobile home? Yeah, mobile home. I mean that's been a sensitive subject. We call it manufactured housing now, though. <laughs> yeah, what, I mean, you're talking about pulling the one on. If it's kind of permanently on oh, yeah. cinder blocks or something, right. yeah. If there's no wheels, we don't get yeah, it. If everyone were putting two of those in their backyard, yeah. pretty. Soon the neighborhood one. just wouldn't. You can only put one. Can I put one? We are proposing to. No, no, one detached. That would be a detached. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, and while we're on that subject, I think uh, we should talk about just and throwing it up there. Tiny homes? No. For the R1, mm -hmm. where they're attached to municipal water, municipal sewer. We had talked about this. And right now that we allow a uh, half an acre. So if you own a one acre uh, lot, you can have a duplex. Just throwing this out there. What do you think about a quarter acre? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, so I agree. you could have a you could if you have an acre and a half uh, or sorry, if you have one acre or you could do four units or you need double the on duplex. the lot. I, I think we should eliminate that entirely. Meet the setback. And as long as you meet setback and parking it'll work itself out um, don't we have a road frontage piece though that's going to be problematic if we have like because there are some lots that are There's subdivision but we're talking about like multi-family multi multi okay that doesn't solve that problem with the you want to have two quarter acre lots and have like a, a single family on it because i mean we i throw out the adu thing everybody that comes talk to me right they're, especially if they're going to build new or if they're looking mm -hmm. at a lot don't forget you can you have this right you you, you you can, mm -hmm. you can have the 800 square foot apartment, but a lot of people would like more space, you know, for a, a, a real duplex, you know, I mean, a real two, two, ha two, two right. houses basically hooked together. And so we're really limited because, you know, in, in a lot of those downtown lots that are on water and sewer, the lots are not very big. And again, I think that the goal, and I'm hoping that Celie is on board with this, we want to put our housing where the sewer and where water system, system is, right? right? Isn't that what and, we want? And we want less people driving. Well, and we want we want housing downtown. Right. We want to save the fields and forests. And we want sewer. people to live right. where the services are. The sewer and water. So this is a slave exactly. too. Yeah. The sewer and water isn't just the sewer, the service. The other services. That's where the, the, the house building is. That's library. Library. That's 
Exactly. That's where you're going. Exactly. That's where you're going. Exactly. I'm just throwing it out. David's yeah. actually taking it even further to say just remove the acreage requirement all and together. Just and and, 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 and let the other limiting factors, your your septic and right. and your setbacks. Because we already have parking. it there right. in the R1 for you gotta have site plan. Site right. plan review by the planning board. For, for, for multi family. family. So exactly. you're gonna get a crack at it, make sure it's done well. So right, right what over. would that do to the folks we heard from last time? It it, it opens up a big can of worms I, because they can certainly do more. I can tell you um, that for the Laramie Farms, yeah. that's what you're yeah. referring to. Yeah. When he has already planned what he's going to ask you for. He told you that. You right. just didn't hear it. He watched this. He watched six buildings. Right. Yes. Yes. He, yes. he wants oh, yeah. six buildings. Right. Yeah. And you know yeah. when I and asked, did that? sorry. Um, but well, I they're <laughs> they're, they're all well. they're all ready are go going to be five hundred people living in three buildings and dumping onto Route Four, and but he has already cut the forest to expand. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's already been done, and um, I think we have to be really careful about talking about them when they're not. Here to well, okay. yeah, the other the real okay. limiting yeah, I, I actually the, the trouble. The real limiting factor to that is the water. And I'd like to right. I'd like to expound on that. Yeah. Um, the the water capacity the capacity of our wells is an issue. And if you take um, what was it 154 units right there, some two bedroom, some one, but in any event, there's there's a there's a calculation you can do based on our actual water consumption in the town. What do our current apartments use? And it it almost be gallon for gallon exactly what that building will use. Yeah, at the time. And so what what I'm concerned about, and it's it's not a reason to deny a large project like Laramie's, but if uh, if all of a sudden you've got from one year and you've now increased the customer base, but by half, um, then we also want to do these ADUs and enable air. So those start to getting built. Well, then at what point do we do we reach where we, we we're back to where we were in 1988 with a water moratorium? We could not allow any more connections because we didn't have the capacity. But hasn't the the problem with the municipal system in general been that we have not really added customers to the system so that the system yes. has become more expensive just by its very nature and there's nobody more no additional people paying for it completely so i think that actually adding rate payers would actually make it possible that we could do some improvements to the system but it's the water supply that isn't it isn't a magic thing can right have added this and yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean this is something that happens during the planning process and we've already talked with this developer about the possibility if it moves forward of them adding a water supply to add to our capacity to, to keep it going and i think you know that's kind of our job to look at what our right. capacity is what we can handle and have that discussion i hope we don't right. get to the point where we put the moratorium but right. almost from a city manager point i would say that would be a good thing. Then we need to figure out the next step. Right. Yeah, I, I think um, we, to, to Kate's point or whoever said it, we, we should try to keep the conversation generic as a zoning conversation rather than bring in yeah. a specific right. project yeah. which may or may right. not happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, get back to Rob's suggestion of changing the, the um, I don't know, R1 or just the C, CB district? Or, I, That's I, R1 because the CB. We, you can already do what I'm talking right. about. Or uh, just you, water sewer. On water sewer. Our one is more than water sewer. one's more than water sewer. No, just so, just on water sewer. Yeah, but water there's water. a there's a in the in the R1 there's language in there where it says it's one acre minimum. Right, right. Okay, okay. Four, I just want to be clear water, about water. Well, when, water and sewer. Right, yeah. water sewer. I would make the language to say right, right. Water sewer water could be water sewer. It could be quarter acre. Right, that's it. 
little yeah. change. Yeah. One little yeah, we're really, change. We're and I think that would be dramatic. What I would what I would say is we, we really were water talking water. about Laramie Farms. What we're actually talking about is can we do we have the ability to right. add 300 customers? Yeah. Yeah. And that's there's the water ability to add. We don't right now. We don't. Back. But Ed, Ed says we're right. working on it. Well, that's what I mean. And, you know, because it means a new well. And it's what we've been talking about. We're working on one anyway, right. but like right. I said, when a bigger development like the one proposed comes right. in, we're going to have those discussions with that. Right. You know, and it could be an impact fee or, you know, you've got to have your own water system, water. whatever. Can I just throw one of my ideas out there? Yeah. I don't know if Ed's even heard this. Idea. Maybe he has. <laughs> my idea says the, uh, the Shaker Village has its own water system. Actually, Jim Taylor is the operator, but mm -hmm. as a private citizen, yeah. he's right. the operator of that system. system. Their wells are unbelievable. And yeah. the whole yeah. is And so I and I've talked to people in the Shaker uh, uh, Homeowners Association right. that tying them together is the future there because it benefits them as they get municipal operation of their system. Right. You tie it together, they get fire protection from our tank. Right. We tie it together, we get their water too. Right. We get unbelievable water. Our water is really good, and, really good water. And to add to and lots of it. No amount of impact fee or, or wishing no. is going to solve <laughs> a, a water supply issue. Right. Because unless you, you have the well drilled, capacity tested, and, and mm -hmm. water quality tested, right. it does not exist. Yeah. Right. 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 And at least, we'll there, doing, so at least we'll be doing some of that activity directional board. immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And we have, we do know we have wells that were, we, well, we don't love the quality. Yeah. There is an option to use them. It's just how much money do you want to treatment pay yeah. right, for yeah. treatment? So yeah. I think we have options and we should continue to move our water project yeah. forward and so, uh, fixate on this. Shall I draft something for you on yes. this? Yeah. On the, on the, on the, so yeah. our, are we talking quarter acre or are we talking 16. no I mean, no acreage limit? Um, I mean, I think maybe it's baby steps. So yeah. we talked about the ADU. We well, yeah. got two ADUs. We double the R1 we, density with yeah. with on lock on. And, and on that's our first. That's system. our first pass at it. Right. Can we can use town wide quarter acre water sewer lots. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. I think. I mean, what you've just done right here. I mean, even if it's just those two, I think that's dramatic. Yeah, right. really do. Um, group want to keep going till 930 or wrap it up? What are the other topics that we might want to include in the uh, zoning change? Rob, do you have that thing that you sent to me? Because my computer died. I do, but it's in the other room. <laughs> Don't look at it. Uh, <laughs> the zoning board, just throw that out there because Kurt was here yeah. and, and Celie's on the zoning board. Last night, the only thing that, that really was was a main topic of discussion was the idea about the front setback or the street setback yeah. for uh, private roads versus town roads. And we've had a discussion. We had a discussion last night about it. And I've also talked to our municipal attorney on that. We actually think we're in pretty good shape there because of the language in our ordinance says it's the setback to the lot line contiguous to the street. Mm -hmm. And so typically with a private road, and I'm thinking of Holly Side as one of the classic ones. There I, I get such a refund from the town taxes because of my private road. <laughs> I don't want to give that up. Yeah. But I mean, it's a private road. So there's a lot line that starts at the side of the street for you, correct? You don't own. I completely disagree with this, this, this piece. I mean, but I mean, it's because that I live it, right? right. I don't right. think that you should tell me what I, what I can do or not do on my private roads. Just so, no, 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 it's a setback. What do you mean? But that's for everybody. But it's a but setback. It's a private road. Did, but does, what does your deed say? Deed says I owe, I, well, ours is kind of funny. We own the, the road. We, we own. So you could like put a toll booth then? Yeah, we you own, know. we own up to the road and across the road and we just keep going. I can give you a little bit, like Brad, if I, can, if I may, yeah. just real quick. It's very interesting. A little bit about the, the reasoning for it. And we're running into this on Algonquin. We've got a situation where somebody's put a structure mm -hmm. too close to the road on a private section of Algonquin, which is very similar to Hall. Very similar. 
Yep. And the reason is that when somebody plows that road, there needs to be room for the snow to go off the road such that an emergency vehicle can make it down that road. It's not, not getting constrained in as the snow starts to pile up. So the, the motivation is that to talk about this with the attorney. Does, does that mean that the town plows our road? No, no, no. no. The, fire no. Is we fire fire the fire protection people. Fire, fire truck, fire ambulance. Truck. Okay. So if, if, so the structure that we're talking about on Algonquin is now encroaching on the road, literally right to the side of the road. Right. And in the wintertime, the people that are plowing that, it's not the town, people are plowing it and they have to kind of tuck it in every time they go around that structure now, now because it's too close to the road. All of a sudden that road starts to narrow up on a big snowstorm, the fire down the street, fire truck can't get through, it's too narrow. There's a there's two giant snow banks on each side. That's that's the reason. That's what the lawyer said to me. That's that's why we have it. It's basically why the the, the law safe. exists. Yeah, you're depriving orders. someone else of safety to use further down the road. Right. Yeah. Um, Hall, uh, let me just add, Holly yeah. Drive has a 33 foot right of way. That's what my deed said when when they didn't made it. So the Holly Drive is supposed to be 33 feet wide. Most of those houses, right away. most of those houses were built before 1990. Um, uh, but that's what okay, happened. So my, 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 my carport and and three feet of my kitchen is non-compliant, mm -hmm. and and I can't do anything. It, you, you know, I've been before you. I I, I can't do it anywhere. Well, no. the other issue is when which I think is unfair, unless you give me a, a rebate on my taxes for the private road. Well, it already is. It's, it's taken into account. You just not charged for it. Right, right. It's already taken into the assessment. Right. Yeah. Um, but real. the other issue is when these private roads get constructed and then 10 years later, they come into the town saying, I want you to take over this road. No, we, we don't, don't want that. No, but that's what happens. That's what happens. But, but that's what happens with developers. So we, but we, we've really said yes to that, right? The town has. No, 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 no. They say it every have. time. They say yes every time. Every time it's well, yeah. If it's I, understand, time, I understand your point in terms yeah. of emergency vehicles, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. This conversation started with you saying a uh, discussion about setbacks on town roads and right. private roads, right? But I don't think we got to the well. This is kind of the debate that we're having here, and okay. why? Why no, we've I, always we've always enforced the setback as a zoning administrator or land use administrator. We've all always enforced it equally, whether it's private or town. Well, and there's been some discussion. Remember, your lawyer, Rob disagrees. He, he, but he did say nobody's ever taken it to the to the court and taken it all the way. And that would that would certainly establish whether yeah. we're on. And he the thinks way. it's just a matter of time. He does. He does. But and he would be representing the municipality. He would. Yes. He'd be defending us. <laughs> the lawyer that was his uh, okay. lady's yeah. attorney. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll keep enforcing it until we're told not to. By Supreme Court, I think it would probably yeah. be. Yeah. I guess, um, as Rob said, we just called our land use attorney on that, who said that he believes our being written correctly to be able to enforce that. Yeah, so so it's a, it's a it's a lot line setback, yeah, right? Yeah, just like yeah. the side setback or the the water setback too. I mean, there, it's he he liked it. He was like, oh, that's a great way to say that, and so do, and okay. actually. Hey, in your so case, in his case, where he owns the road and the land across the road, which is building, what I heard but him say, still, but his building but lot is his building his lot. lot that he lives on. Is he still, he did, still have a lot line? Are those yeah, other separate lot. lots? Yeah, they are separate lots. You get two, two tax road. bills. Uh, there are two tax bills. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, those right. are and the right of and a right away goes over lots. It creates a lot line. Right. Yep. Still creates a lot line. And with the right of way, if it was a private driveway, we wouldn't have any. Yeah, that's a separate. It's just that, that my opinion, and I realize I'm in the minority, <laughs> is that if you're gonna if you're gonna, gonna restrict me yeah. on my private road, then you need to give me services on my private road. And we do. You you can't fire police ambulance. No, you don't. <laughs> if you called the fire department, you don't think our fire department? No, would know? of course they would. But there you um, go. I got one. <laughs> it's I don't it might have. I think it came up. Maybe the Z. PDA, yep. uh, building height measurements. We have right. a 35 foot height limit, and I didn't have a chance to look through the regs to see if it says exactly where you measure. Yeah, from. from it's from the ground. From the what part of the building? Front of the house. Okay, so it's a design front. Design front. 
So that's my interpretation. And so the same with the building inspector has been right. when you pull up to the house from the public right away or the public right. road. That's the front. That's the front. The, the road frontage is your front of the house. Yep. Now, does the fire comments oh. feel mm -hmm. that they need something for the back of the building? Can you have it? Can you have so, a house built on a slope in the back of the building? Exactly. Yeah, so it can be way higher or walk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You yeah. Now, do they have an issue I, with that? I was actually restricted from we, the lake. We, we, uh, I remember one case where they averaged between the front and the And end. I think we, uh, somewhere, you guys tell me that we clarified that. So it's yeah. now in the zone. Yeah, yeah we, 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 had, we had a case yeah. and it's based right. on the front. It's based on the front. And, and, the, and the whole thinking of it is, from the fire department's perspective, is they're going to pull in with their fire truck and yeah, they're going to yeah, grab sure. the load ladder off the truck that we have we have you know we have portable ladders and they're going to set it up to the house and they're going to get to the roof of your house to do ventilation mm -hmm. is what they're going to do see okay. yeah. well there's a house going across and I've been over them yeah. plenty of times across the street from me and they wanted a view so they clear cut the lot and the house is really close pretty close yeah. to the road yeah but what they did was built the ground up because it wasn't high enough so they could get their view so yep. now i got a house going up that's already up high yep. and it's going to go up, up i don't know how many half the floors are going to have but it's like <laughs> it's going to be too long yep. and it's right across from me and it's not far away it's like one big it's going to be one big wall yep. and that's not right anybody can go to any hill or wherever they want to be even on the lakes because this is the problem it can be a problem they could do the same thing on the lakes somebody go well, they do do it behind they do. them <laughs> the they build the house up, block everybody behind them yep. they can't get the view you tax the, then that house doesn't get any taxes <laughs> you know it's well it's interesting because it's not being enforced uniformly because the building inspector from enfield measured from the on the lake side i have a slope plot yeah and he measured from the so I have a walkout basement, yep. and he measured from the front of the lake. How long ago? Right. Uh, two two years. years. Two years. And and it, when did we change it? I don't, I don't and, remember. And, oh, one. A lot longer than that. And uh, it was supposed so, yeah. to be. That's why I was. Mine was, was my point. With thirty six feet, and he forced us to lower the roof, change the pitch to get it down to thirty five from the lake. That's why I, I didn't think no, of anything specifically in the regs right. saying this is where you take your measurement from. I can find it. Yeah. On page 79, last, the last board, yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you last night, yeah. it says from... Can, I, can, can we get back to what zoning it. thing wanted, though? What was zoning's mm -hmm. question? Can we, well, she, it was, it's yeah. Steely, that, this wasn't zoning. I was, was trying Steely. to get them to tell them, so I was trying to get that house to make sure it doesn't... No, the setback thing. 75 well, zoning, no, well, zoning... That wasn't setback. She was talking height. Oh, the well, first, no, the no, first no, topic we are yeah. talking about, zoning... Yeah, I said that back. we pretty much have we we're have, in the clear. We're in the clear because of okay. the way our zoning ordinances are. Okay. Altered. Yep. I didn't know if they wanted us to change it. No, no I, I think there was. Is it, is they were referring to some previous cases when it was okay. confusing. Okay. And we're getting conflicting calm information. Okay. That makes it was yeah. my impression. Yeah. Um, I'm just. Yeah. Just I want to make sure that we're. And conservation it's didn't it's have anything there. I just saw uh, they yeah. haven't gotten back to us, so I assume. Nothing. Okay. Under no, no, anything no, else? They're doing a proposal. Yeah, here we go. Us, you Height, know, 81 I, in my in my. Oh, okay. Height shall be measured from the natural. That might be something. Right. Say. Natural surface of the ground on the side of a structure facing the street, road, or right of way. Okay. Yeah. Natural surface. Well, just the ground, the dirt. Dirt. Gravel and sand. The dirt. Well, I mean, if you, it's natural surface. Yeah. That's how. We've been. I mean, yeah, Liam and I. Well, you can't pile up a bunch of pallets and say. Yeah, you probably that, 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 that's, right. that's that's not. It the really pallets are not natural surface, but get around yeah. the back of the house. If you say fill that. up, you know, fill lakeside. Fill in. Yeah, but if you that's, that's your front of your building, you fill. You that's in, up for, in my mind, that's up for debate. That would be. Uh, but it's not going to be dragged away when the building goes up. Brad, was yours road? Was it road frontage? In, uh, the, the road frontage was much less. It was yeah, like, I don't know, 15, 15 20 feet, something like yeah. that. 
but on the on the lake side because it's a slow plot it was 36 and we had to change it to 35. but so, that's interesting yeah because that's yeah. different that's than different than right right, right. yeah but the, yeah, uh, when I, yeah. Came, I mean that wasn't it wasn't me so so, I mean, well, I'm not going to charge it back. Right. <laughs> a little too late. But a Google else, up, one well, Google I, yeah. um, I don't, I mean, it's yeah. up to you guys if you, you want to yeah. do this or not. Tell Cell Tower uh, rights yeah. update. Let's not get into that. Don't, let, don't bother. Yeah. I, mean, I, I have a feeling we're going to be discussing zoning regs again. You think? At, yeah, next meeting. Like maybe. Well, I mean, even, I mean, even if you even want it on this year's ballot. No. I don't think so. Wait, I'm going to okay. have we, that's, other stuff. that's where I was going with this. Okay. Okay. That's not uh, for me. Zoning changes to be continued yeah, at our next meeting. Sounds good. Um, master plan. Uh, we met on Monday. We went over the entire plan from beginning to end. Uh, I think the general consensus is that we're somewhere between 90 and 95 percent there. Uh, next steps, we are going to have Brandy incorporate the comments that we made on Monday. Once that is done, we are going to circulate that draft to some community volunteers who are better proofreaders and better acquainted with the intricacies of the English language than many of us here are. Uh, Kurt, would you be willing to volunteer to look at the maps and check mm -hmm. them for accuracy? Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll make sure that you get a copy of that. Okay. Um, once the proofreaders and Kurt, I, I'm going to include you as a proofreader, the map. Yeah, proofreader. I'm not a proofreader. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what, once that is complete, which shouldn't take more than a few days, um, we'll send it back to Brandy. She will make a final, final draft. We will circulate that to the public. Uh, it'll go up on, on the website, Enfield Leap's website. Um, we'll put out the signs. We will have a mailing. and. And then we will have a final public review or final comments, which should be the weekend. Uh, tentatively, it's the uh, 13th of November, which is a Sunday. We're still trying to nail down the location. Um, it won't be the community building because somebody's having a birthday party. Our next option is the uh, Shaker Museum. And we're in Rob is in contact with them to see if we can rent their room. And uh, two o'clock is what we're going for. Yeah, four. Yep. two to four Sunday afternoon. It's a bye week for the Patriots. Has I yes. considered using the elementary school like we used to? It's that, usually free. That has not been brought up because I think the only reason we stopped using it for things um, like town meeting day was largely because of. Ooh. COVID. Um, and so they typically, uh, unless you're getting to basketball season, don't have it all booked up. So, and there's not a bunch of furniture and items in there due to COVID anymore. So, could also uh, check with the school district. Okay. Rob, can you do that for us? Sure. Uh, after we have that public hearing, uh, public meeting for final input, assuming that the public likes it, which I'm sure they will. We then move on to our official planning board public hearing, at which we hopefully adopt it. Uh, um, it would be really nice if the group thinks that we can have two public hearings on the same evening, do the zoning and do the master plan on, what is it, December? Th I forget the date. Okay, it for you, hold on a sec. It would be our our first meeting in December, 14th. December 14th. So if the group thinks that we can do it, do two hearings, um, I tend to think that the 
master plan hearing won't take too long because anybody who's interested hopefully will have come to all of our meetings and said their piece. Uh, you know, we can schedule them both together. If not, it will kick over into January, but I think it would be great if we could do it this year. Tim? So, um, wasn't here, of course, when the the master planning task force was set up. And that was set up by the planning board. Mm -hmm. okay. So you approved the members and so forth of that. We selected them. Selected them. Yeah. Um, so it, in that process, it's it seen that task force could be coming to the planning board to present their draft um, master plan. And that we would then deliberate um, about any further changes that the board felt like good or good to make, right? Essentially, that's the way it was conceived. I just want to make sure we've got enough time to build in there for the planning board to, to deliberate. Because we'll we'll have to vote on it. We will. Yeah. Um, and now, is that a a vote. Um, the vote on a draft to partake to a public hearing would probably be one vote. No, I don't think so. Well, no, yeah, we maybe. Have, yeah. I think we'd have to. I, I would. I think, yeah. And we the master plan is not tied to, to any uh, um, strict deadline either. It's our own deadline. Yeah. Where the zoning changes are. Deadlines are fixed. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We, and, and sometimes mm -hmm. they schedule the second hearing because people are up and armed over something. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I, I would have them separate. I would keep the master plan as a separate time frame. Well, what I meant was, uh, we we get the master plan. We haven't read the final draft yet as a plan as a as a board. And then we have time to review it ourselves. Uh, then we come back and we say, OK, are we ready to present this to the public public hearing? I see your point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, because it, we hold is, it is our plan. It's not the task force plan. No, right. you're right. Could we hold that in November meeting? Could you uh, decide whether to have the hearing later in December or January? We got the 28th, which is after Christmas, so it's not going to get in the way of Christmas. <laughs> Would be the fourth Wednesday. We could hold it then. Because it may take longer than you think on the master plan. I'm hoping not. I am too, I'm, but I, it could. It could. It's yeah. It's I, think the, the I think just five are Yeah. Just to explain. Next, what you going to do more of yep. the rest of it. Yeah. Yep. I think right. the master planning task force, to their credit, right. is now feeling a sense of momentum and urgency right. to, to take this sucker across the finish line. Yeah. And if you guys have some of the history on previous attempts at master plan updates, right. we literally got 80, 90 percent and then it fizzled right. out. Right. So I, I guess it's just. So there's a sense of urgency from the yeah. master planning task force, and I, I hope that is what you're feeling too, because we really will. Yeah, we really. I mean, it's actually it actually was a ton of work. It's a ton of work. Well, that's it's, why. it's not just meetings. Yeah, and well, more work. Done. A lot of written yeah. work. Yeah, we've got yeah. more yeah. stuff we want to do. I only yeah. see if there's going to be any changes at all done by the planning board, it's going to be minor. Yep. And it's just going to be some wordsmith, some little word yeah. changes were right here, or we don't like this line. Um, well, it's all. But, Based off still, of the, the the survey, right? Yeah. So it's it's all data based, and right? All of right, but it's data. but it's the proposed. I mean, ha haven't we gone through that exercise with the planning board? No, 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 no. Only piecemeal, only little bits. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my problem. I am not seeing a complete draft. In we, did, we didn't send it to the planning board. Well, we had a we had one presentation four or five months ago. We had a go look at. It's too hard because it's not right. finished one. There you go. Okay. And so I think you yeah. missed that step. And I, the reason I have concern about it is because one of the things I specifically asked for was that the references 
to be put in because if you're going to put in something that's not considered common knowledge, it is absolutely required to put a reference in. So there were pieces of data that I am sure they are not easily found common knowledge. And I don't want us to someday be like, oh, did we make this up or what reference document did it come from? So I know those pieces are missing when you guys were skimming through them the other night. It did not look like that work was done. That's a problem. Yeah. Okay. Why don't we say why don't we say that the 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 next copy that Randy produces, the yeah. one that's going to go to the proofreaders, right. that goes to planning board mm -hmm. as well as master plan yeah. task force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that and, also, and remind Brandy that she needs to do the references to his case. Right. Plan. And that also gives us the 28th if we need a second hearing on the zoning. Yeah. The zoning changes. I think there's no one in January for the zoning too. Early mm -hmm. January. Um, yeah, real early. Yeah. I think Brandy is quite meticulous so it's, it's not a dig at her work um, and I don't know what she's using for software but often at the end you do have to go in and put references here and there because of how things move around so uh, I'm I'm hopeful that you know it'll be well, and there's a ton of them oh I know you know all the stats and everything mm -hmm. from a variety of sources it's crazy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and you know there, there are certain things that like you say she is leaving until the the main body of things just gets locked down. Yeah. So she can do her footnotes and citations. So I think like if they, I'm just going to throw a random, like say it was U.S. Geological, you, it, within the text, it was U.S. Geological Survey, blah, 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 document. That could go in now because it's an exterior reference and it won't change unless you're footnoting and your software doesn't accommodate footnotes. But well, well, that that stuff, she's going to put in a live link. Yeah. So it'll and live link is, right to the data. Yep. yep. And that's on, if you're looking at it on. But on the line. danger of live links without, so live Link isn't as good as a reference, right? Mm. Because people change their URLs. So you have to have the reference and a live link. Sure. Yep. And sure. I've I've been beat with a hammer of truth on this a bunch of times. Um, so how important is it timing wise for the um, whatever zoning amendments we will propose that the master plan be completed? Before that first hearing, there's no, there, there, there's no, there's no time relationship between the two. I know there's nothing required, but I think it's more of a perception issue, uh, selling a product issue, garnering support for the zoning changes we want. It seems we definitely want that master plan on the street uh, before town meeting. And that seems that should happen. Though. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't, I, well, we're not going to have the master plan on the street before we have our, well, we might have it before when we might have it almost simultaneously with the, um, with the hearing. Depends how it times out. Yeah. Yeah. But the master plan will be on the street for probably two months before the town meeting. At least, yeah, yeah, and that's the most that's important. the one because that's when they're voting. Yeah, the the public hearing is going to be five people, maybe mm -hmm. six. <laughs> yeah, I think Celia would be here. We've got here too that we're really close, and that we right. didn't want to wait. No, for no, another eighteen months. Oh no, no, on. but that, that's why I'm saying the twenty eighth means you've got it done this year. Yep, the calendar year you have it done. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there financial things that we will benefit? from by having the master plan completed oh yes there's a lot of grant a lot of grant money depends on having a master plan with an x number of years i think right so Less a than couple of them yeah. yeah it's real real important for the town to gain funding to do a lot of the stuff that we're talking about you know here in the planning board in master in in terms of of revising zoning regs you know that could be a 18 or 24 month process is what brandy estimated when we talked about it the other day um and, and this is just the beginning there's is. also a lot of historical grants that you have to have a master yeah. plan for that's what we get but you cannot you cannot get it you, cannot, you, cannot get it. Still you can't get the grant unless you've got an up-to-date master plan because you have to fill <laughs> historic districts 
and you, historic districts have to be up to date. And, and in terms of things like transportation, you know, right. if we're going to talk to the state about Route 4 or Route 4 and Maple Street, um, you know, if we have a master plan that says this is what needs to happen and where it should happen, uh, the chances of the state listening to us are increased by some by some small bit. And this is our, our housing project projected. Yeah, I mean, because we have a we're we're looking at workforce housing, which means it's going to bring more people, which means it's going to bring more traffic to Route Four. Mm -hmm. So you say in New Hampshire, DOT needs to know that. So when you do your project. You have to keep this in mind. That's right, because you don't want advanced transit buses pulling buildings off of their foundation. That's right. It's not going to work. I think we're good. I think we are too. So 20 minutes of 10. Uh, <laughs> is, is there any old business? Is there any new business? Our next meeting no. is on October 26th. Do we have any here? You know, not that I'm aware of it. Uh, we will continue all of these wonderful discussions then. Uh, we may even be able to get into looking at the master plan yeah. as a as a group. Yeah. And hopefully giving blessing to it. Just like to see a draft would be all set. Who wants to make great. a motion to adjourn? So moved. I, second. <laughs> all in favor Aye. of adjourning. Aye. Aye. Uh, uh, it's to go to <laughs> uh, we are adjourned uh, somewhere around 9.41. Thank you for the extra 40 yeah. minutes, people. Yeah. You can have our meeting without any hearings. <laughs> this is a work session, and we got a lot accomplished. Yeah, we did. So I appreciate everybody staying yeah. late and everybody's good ideas. Okay. Tim, thanks for pulling together that document. Yeah, that's very nice. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, it's very helpful. Well, we'll we, actually, I like to remember that. If not, we'll do it. I don't know how big. I was going to follow up. Yeah. Like, you have to I would do it. Well, I do later for both yeah. private roads. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, and it's like.